We are live, Venice. Oh, hi, hi Stan. Now we're live. Now we are live. Why, uh, let's tell the people why we started live so late, Stan. Um, why, what, what are you saying is why we started live so late? Because you don't know what you're doing over there. Is that why? Uh, what else is the reason why? Uh, because I'm clicking the thing and clicking apply and it's not applying what I'm clicking. So you do know what you're doing. 50-50. Okay. And then I said, hey, Stan, why don't you fuck with it and get it right on your own time? To which I And then what'd you say, Stan? To which I replied what? I'm asking you. I do do it on my own time. No, you don't. On your own time, you you masturbate, you sex with girls, you eat shitty food, you pick on your nephews, you drink beer, and you smoke drugs. Who told you that I pick on my nephews? <laughs> I did it at your house, Stan. And what, I pick on my nephews? Well... A little bit. You're not. You're more of. You're like a big brother rather than an uncle. Okay. That's how I try to be. All right. You know. Um, but I said all these things, and you said, "I don't do that." And then I went. I was like, "You don't masturbate in your own time," which you said, "No, I do." I do drink some great South Bay on my own time. You do drink beer on your own time. You smoke drugs on your own time. Then we got to the discussion. You sex girls on your own time. And you said, no, I don't. And I said, all right. De de let's define sexting. Okay, what's the Menace Bermuda's definition of sexting? I want to hear yours first. Uh, sending provocative text back and forth. And or nude photos. Yes. Yeah, that's it definitely sexting. But for me, it was like you texting girls in a casual way. Like, hey, like, I don't know. Just got some great South Bay brews over here. If you want to come over and have a few, maybe watch a movie. But in the back of your head, while you're saying all these things, you're just like, you got her hair wrapped up in your hands, and you, and the head's pushed down, and you're behind her, with her panties down, near, just below her knees. <laughs> I don't think uh, that's sexting at that point. Well, like, in your head, you're sexting, you're, you're setting that all up. Am I? You know? Hey... What's going on, beautiful? How you doing? It seems like... Is your, is your father a boxer? Because you're a knockout. Oh, man. I should have copied it. I saw a really good pickup line that you would have liked. So it's totally gone. You have no clue what it is. No clue. Totally gone. No clue where you saw it. Nope. No clue. Stan, I'm, I'm drinking a Great South Bay. Brewery beer. What about you? I am. I'm going with the summer ale. What do you got going on over I'm there? I'm drinking the massive IPA. Uh, it gets you there quicker. 7.0 alcohol content. You know, you drink three of these bad boys and you're there. What is it, alcohol content? Seven. Seven? Yeah, well, it's called a massive IPA. You're trying to get you fucked up over there. I tell you what, Great South Bay Brewery ever comes out with a beer. Let's talk about what it might taste like and what the alcohol content would be, Stan. What? It, what? You just said if you just said if Great South Bay ever comes out with a beer, they've come out with like fucking fifty no, of them. Comes out with a menace and the man beer. Oh, I don't know. Who knows? I'm really the Belgian Belgian ales or. I don't, I'm not, 
you know, I like a Pilsner or an Amber as well. I even fucks with a lager. What do you, you have any comments, Stan, on this? Um, no, I'm pretty uh, open. Okay. How much, what alcohol content would you want it to be? What alcohol content would I want it to be? Uh, I don't know. A variety. You're not paying attention at all. I we am. need a variety. You, you want the alcohol content to be a variety? A variety. It could be a five. It could be a seven like you're drinking. I'll even drink a girly 3.5 or 4.0, whatever they are. You're you know? saying we have to pick an alcohol content. What would you want it to be? Oh, a uh, strong one. I want the menace and the man beer to be like, nah, I, I got. I want some people, like bitch made motherfuckers, to say, nah, 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 I can't drink that one. It fucks me up too much. So an eight point five. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we can go there. All right. Like you have four of those, and you're you're spent. Yep. Three or four, mm-hmm. three or four, and you're done. Your body shotted by the menace after three or four of them. Wow. So, in terms of guests, Chaz Skelly confirmed, hey, he's down for whatever kind of... Randy confirmed he's kind of down for whatever. I was thinking we just... We throw a shot at Uriah Faber. We throw a shot at Caitlin Ch- uh Blonde Fighter, and Kyle Sermonera, might as well. And Weidman. We just... And... and Kusumano. Or, I mean, uh, Usumano. Wow. <laughs> Usman, sorry, Kush. I was, I was, because when I start texting Usman, Kush comes up, and I combine Kush and Usman together, and we have a buddy named Kusumano. I saw Kusumano on my drive home. Yeah. Yeah. He's out there catching like huge tuna. I saw that. Anyways, so Stan, what are your thoughts on just hey, if you're free, come on in. Do it. I'm going to check my email or my messages for that invite on that boat, Kusumano, to catch them tuna. I'm a big, right. big tuna guy. Talk about things with the people why I copy and paste. Um, so, well I'll, well, I'll pick your brain a little bit, but I'll carry the conversation. You didn't watch these fights this past weekend. You said you caught a little bit of it, right? Yes. Jessica, I... So that's even a point that we, if, we, if Caitlin does jump on with us, Caitlin sent out that tweet like, Cynthia, she wrote Cynthia Calvillo or gimme, gimme, gimme Cynthia Calvillo. That was her post. I love it. I love it too, but that's not a, it's not an easy call out. She's not an easy match for anybody. Like that's something I saw with Jessica. I, I was like, damn, this is a very difficult opponent right here. No, you don't think? Um, I think Calvillo had some... I don't think she, she'll she be able to take down Blonde Fighter as easily as she took down yes. Jessica I. Oh, come on. She's, uh... Well, we've talked about that. Uh, it's takedown defense sexually transmitted. It's not. But it could be in the Seminara household. Like, what's that? Osmosis? Yeah. Anyways, uh, Henry Hoop, do I, say, do I just kick one at him? Yeah, oh. I, I thought you kicked one at him earlier, you didn't? I just said Henry, he never responded. Busy training champions. Yeah. And even that, like, that would be, that's obviously where we want to go with, like, Chaz Kelly. Hey, how are you? How's life? How are things? Who's going to win? Oh, wow. No? Yeah, I mean, I also want to know what Chaz is up to. Of course. And like I said, I told you I've seen him on some Sanford MMA shit doing like the um, interviews and whatnot on their page. How's his interviews? Does he got skills? Oh, uh, he's no menace, but. Oh, wow. Thank you. Yeah, he's doing something. It means a lot to me. You know, I saw him on there talking to Gilbert, and then I think uh, I, I could think I saw another one, but I definitely saw the Gilbert one. I tuned in for a little bit. 
wrote a couple answers and questions, and he didn't respond to any of them. So I was like, fuck this, I'm out of here. Oh, here's Chaz Skelly right now jumping in. Oh, he's ready. He man, is ready. Man. He's so good. Punctual. How about my lighting over here? Should I turn my lights on, or is this good? You could. X Chaz once he just pops in. All right. Connect, <laughs> connecting his audio. Uh, Chaz! Hello? Chaz, we can't hear you, Buzz. Can we stand? Nope. He has to connect his audio. Which I don't think connected. Fuck with your levels. I feel like I can hear him trying to talk. Chaz, talk. Just start clapping. Oh, here we go. Chaz? Yeah, can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you. Got it. Chaz, I gotta I gotta ask you, how's my lighting? So I go this lighting or this lighting? They're both alright. I like the second one better. Alright. Second one is Chaz, how you been, bro? Been pretty good. How you been? Oh, pretty good. I was uh talking to Stan, because you had asked about a podcast, right? Yep. And Stan's the guy who knows more than I. So you guys can, you know, send numbers after the show, and he can get you kind of hooked up and maybe give you some pointers on whatever you want to know on that. But awesome. so Stan, so one thing about Chaz is same weight class as me when I was fighting. Met him, and I just thought he was going to be this weird, like, ah. Fuck this guy. He's coming to my gym. He's training. Chaz is fucking one of the coolest guys ever. Like, right, like within like a day, like, I'm like, dude, are we best friends? Like, super <laughs> we welcoming. Yeah, like, drinks beer. Wait, are you in Texas right now, Florida? I'm in Florida. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We're, uh, we haven't been back home in forever. Seems like we want to make a trip soon, but. We're just kind of kind of hanging out here. Uh, Stephanie Stephanie works here. Actually, where they built Stanford uh, MMA, where they built our gym, there's a strength conditioning place built onto it. They do neurological engineering, uh, physical therapy, you know, recovery, and she does the finances for them. Barwis. No. Yeah. That's what I was going to say to Menace, is I noticed you doing something with Sanford MMA, or at least you were on their Instagram talking to Gilbert Burns. Yeah, so I was going to say, I'm actually about to start a podcast for Stanford. Um, so after I got hurt this last time, they hired me. They built an orthopedic surgeon's office onto our gym as well. But there's only a, there's only a doctor in there, you know, twice a month or whatever. So I just do the admin stuff for that, and I do the admin stuff for our gym. And so, you know, I get to work, and I'm still in the gym all the time. So when I recover, I can, you know, take another fight or whatever. Oh, so my you're God. banged up right now. Yeah, I had uh, uh, my pectoralis major tendon got torn from the bone. So I had surgery. It's a six-month recovery. Damn. Yeah, it actually sucked because I – Landed in Vegas. I was supposed to fight on UFC 246. I went through my whole camp. I felt great. I landed in Vegas, or I landed for my layover to get to Vegas, and I just my social media was all blown up, and everybody's saying, "Oh, that sucks. That sucks." And I was like, "What sucks?" They're like, you didn't hear your fight's canceled. Uh, the guy I was fighting, I was fighting a kid named Grant Dawson. He had some issues with uh, Usada. It was basically he had. He had been busted for something in the past, and he still had traces of it in his blood, kind of like the John Jones picograms, you know. And okay. uh, what country is he there from? There was a little more. There was a little more to it. Uh, he he was clean, you know. There was a little more to it. It just sucked. They happened. To, they tested him, and and I guess there were traces of something in his blood, and and you know, whatever. I, I believe he was clean, though. I don't. I don't think he was, you know, dirty. 
Now, if it was like, you know, like, you know, when your opponent misses weight and they're like, hey, do you still want to fight him? You're like, yeah. I mean, probably be the same with drugs, right? Like, if a guy was like, hey, just turns out your opponent popped, do you still want to fight him? We'll give him, we'll give you 20% of his purse. I'm like, yeah. yeah. I'm like, I'll take, I'll take the money and I'll, yes, I'll still fight it. That should be an option, no? Yeah. Hey, hey, I agree. I think it should be an option. It should be an option. Like, or like, it's not 20%, it's 40%. Better option. Much better option. Hey, Stan, let's mail it in. Yeah. Man, this should be on the board. I know. There should be seven judges, and if someone pops dirty for something that's banned, 40% of the purse. If that guy, you know, or that guy can sit, try to get his shit right. If you were just like the head of the the head of the judges, you look at the scorecards. One of the judges sucks. You've got like the uh, the button, the button just to send them down to the snake pit. <laughs> they they, wow. they have the scorecard. Hair just falls right off underneath them. Man, that would be awesome. Yeah, there should definitely be more judges. No, I don't know. Maybe the three, last man there's three judges with guys that like you don't know their MMA background. Yeah, I think the judges should definitely be uh, certified. I think that they need there needs to be something going on there with uh, you know continuing education type stuff for judges and refs for sure. Like have, have, have like the, like to become a judge, you have to watch what seven fights. Right? And they're all, I don't know. And they have to like sit there and like this, that round and just score the rounds, the random fights. And that's how you, if you get them all right, like, okay, as a real judge, the best judge, I, you know, your, your judgments were right. We're good. I'll take it. I'll take it. Yeah. I, yeah, I think, uh, I think they should start them off easy. Fights that, clearly are one-sided or clearly right. one guy wins this round clearly one guy wins this round kind of work them into harder fights for sure uh but man you know how it goes there's such bad judging out there it's amazing sometimes i watch these fights and I'm, even the you know the the feely fight was a split decision and i'm like who scored that it was a close fight but don't don't get me wrong but i mean come on I, you know, that, that couldn't have been a split. So you couldn't have given that to Jordan, I don't think. Right. Um, that's, a, that's a close one. That's a closer one. You know, that's not really one of those that is even controversial. I'm just saying, even for it to be a split to me, I'm like, it looked pretty clear, you know. Yeah. You know what it is, though? I was saying to Menace about Feely's fight. Feely's fights are close enough that, like, if you're an uneducated judge, I said you might score it for Feely. You, or you might score it for the other guy. Like his fights are always, at least the ones I can remember, especially the one with Menace. They're they're close enough that an uneducated judge is gonna go if they're looking away, they're gonna look up and be like, "Oh, that guy." You know what I mean? Well, you know what it is. I think for Philly, it's like one out of fifty strikes he throws hits a good hits the guy like pretty hard. We're like, "Whoa, maybe there's something there." Yeah. But for most, like. Oh, no, you know, there, there was a lot there in this last fight. Like, I had it for Feely, but then after the fight, I immediately, the person I was watching it with, I said, that's going to be a split decision. Just because I could tell just the way the fight, like, what's his name? Charles, Joe Bain, the guy he fought. Yeah. He landed enough to make some of the rounds close, but it was Feely's fight pretty much the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. He's you know, I like what he's touching doing, though. He's very good at touching. Yeah, yeah, he is. Right? Touchy he feels. touches you a lot. And a lot of he times you walk in touch and touches and they're locked in tight. And you're like, oh, you fucker. But I like what he's doing later in his career. He's uh, he's getting more of those takedowns to secure the rounds. I mean, yeah, he probably yeah. he knows he probably knows that his style, you know, if he's touching somebody and they're touching him, you know, it, they could be close rounds, you know, scoring those takedowns are huge. And I think he's that's smart of him to implement that, you know. Yeah, he we was, gotta get him on the show. We're trying. He, he was. I've throwing, heard he's a super nice guy. He was throwing a lot of. Head, I don't know. Him. He was throwing a lot of head kicks in that fight this past weekend too. Well, he's he has a head kick knockout. Yeah, 
So, like, you know, if you have, if you get, you know, success with something, you're going to kind of keep hoping that sucker lands again on random dudes, you know? Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Should I even do it in sparring? <laughs> if something's landed, I keep going to it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and yes, we, I wish that. we've heard Philly, Philly is a super nice guy, but there's one guy who is also a nice guy that Philly has a little bit of history or beef with, if you will. And his name's Dennis Ooh. Bermuda. His name's Dennis Bermuda. We used to go. You guys back- have beef? Uh, I mean, not like I'm not one to to really, you know. I don't know. It was I here. So one day I'm on Twitter. Somebody tags me, Philly, and somebody else. Like, so me and Philly are the same weight class. And then there's another guy. I forget what weight class is. Like, man, you guys are all great fighters. I hope you guys all become champions. And Philly typed in like. Like, I don't know, but the other clowns, like, I'm definitely going to become champion. Like, I get it. That's the attitude you have to get, have. But I was like, nah, son. And I remember, oh, when I was getting ready to fight him, he would go on my fan page and would, like, type in shit like, yo, this dude's going to, like, keep doing that because you're going to get your ass beat. And I was like, yo, motherfucker. Like, (laughs) (laughs) I I get it. Like, it's funny now, but at the time, I was like, dude, I'm going to thrash this guy. And then I yeah, lost. Yeah, no, I get, I get you. I get it. I get it. You know, there can't be two number one. That would be 11. Right. Yeah. That's all you got to say. But at the end of the day, listen, you get more honey than you do with All right. I'm laying sure. I'm, you know, the ego. I'll push this aside. Hey, touchy feely. You're rapping. Oh, oh. And then one. <laughs> One night I got hammered, right? Well, you know, so so I'm on. I saw Uriah Faber posted like a uh, uh, like a music video that you know Touchy Feely did, and I actually listened to. it. I was like, "This is shit." So I went into his comments and I was like, "This is fucking shit. This sucks." Into <laughs> Uriah. So Feely was going through Uriah's comments and was like, people were like, yo, man, dope. Some people would say bad things. He'd be like, he'd be like yo, man, thank you for liking my shit. Some people were like, fuck you. And then he was saying, then he got, he saw mine. And it was like, uh, I think I was already on like a skid of losses. <laughs> he was like, yeah, my, my, you think my shit's trash? Just like you, you're trash. And I was like, yeah. Because I think, <laughs> I was like, I'll drop down the fifty. I'll drop down the back down to forty five. I'm like, he was like the one guy. I was like, I'd come out of retirement for. You know? but I feel uh, like you should get him on the show now. Well, like- well, the thing is, I don't, I don't want to like get him on the show and talk a ton, ton of shit. <laughs> but if it goes there, you, you know, you know, your boy's not going to back down. No, I, I, I've actually heard he's really cool. I've heard, I've heard he's a super nice guy. Yeah, like I, I, just, said, I, I think he's got a talking. really good story to tell. He actually is a really good fighter. Yeah, you for know? sure. And, uh, I'm, you know, Uriah's a super nice dude. So if Uriah's cool with him, he's got to be, you know, he's got to be, you know. And, and he, that whole alpha male crew, I know them all pretty well. And they're all, like, really, like, almost over-the-top nice guys. You know? So I'm like, if yeah. they're, you know – fuck with him and he's got to be you know a stand-up guy too you know yeah my uh i've got a my old roommate really good friend of mine alex munoz trains out there and uh yes yeah he said really <laughs> really cool so i believe you know alex says he's cool so alex alex is a really cool guy super nice guy so weird thing about alex munoz he sounds like he's very like hispanic looking but he's not <laughs> no weird thing his you know what's crazy about him his whole family, they're all like super talented. They can all like paint, oh, just... ride mountain bikes, and just do. They're all gymnasts and shit. It's like uh, it's disgusting. It's like my next door looking. neighbor, my next door neighbors, probably the same family. They're half Native oh. Americans, the Christians. So like my mentor is seven years older than me. He's the youngest of all of them. So he was like. So, like he could bench like two twenty five, but he wrestled at one twelve. 
<laughs> yeah. Like a freak. Yeah. Like, like, he's the only – I watched him do like this. Not one, but two fully all the way out <laughs> one-arm pull-ups. Not like grab your own hand, full. Oh, I'm like, Jesus. Well, I'm like, Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> you know? So freak. Yeah. And his one brother can run forever. He has like the high school like running record. The other brother can make art out of anything. Like my dad, uh, I watched him. He car he had this huge stump. He carved this fucking dope tortoise. Then my dad was. I watched him paint a bunch of shit on canvas with a brush. Then my dad was like, "Hey, can you do murals?" He's like, "Oh, probably." Gives the dude a fucking hood with a you know the, the mural like fine print gun. He makes this dope. I'm like, "Really, dude? You can just give you anything. You can make art." And then the sister's yeah. a good mom, I guess. <laughs> She's a good, great lady. Yeah. And then the so, oldest brother can just, like, never went to mechanic school, never, like, he could just fix anything kind of thing. I'm like, I don't... Yeah, none of them have ever went to carpentry school, can all do carpentry. I'm like, I don't get it. So, Menace, Randy... My, my Randy. family's really good at drinking. We, we yeah. all can... Yeah. <laughs> The genetics I got. What did you say, Stan? Menace, Menace and the Man are good at drinking as well. That's why a beer company sponsored us. Hang on. What talking be, about? Yeah, be, yeah. But Chaz, uh, do you know Randy from the UFC? Formerly, Randy. Formerly from the UFC. He it was the social media guy for the UFC. Uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I, I, know know about. Spell, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. Fairhead Hushman. I'm just going to call him Randy Gastelum because he looks like Calvin Gastelum. He does. <laughs> I know you're talking about. Yeah, I'm just going to do a little quick promo. All right, you do so that. So I got this great South Bay beer, right? Nice. So, Stan, on the last episode, I poured it like this, you know, so there wasn't foam, right? And on, on it, it says, pouring notes. Invert can and pour. So my lady calls me out on it. I was like, are you retarded? Like, why did you... Well, well, well. Like, are you mentally mentally not that smart? Yes. Or whatever are you it? not, like, smart? Do you not know anything? <laughs> and uh, I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, it's supposed to have the head on it. Like, good beer is supposed to have a head on it. That I'm like, oh, the can said to pour it inverted. And then the the brewer said to drink it out of a pint glass. So let's see what happens. Let's see. Inverted. Whoa, there's not a lot of head going on here. Glass too I small. I thought head everywhere. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Dude, that's wild. Did you just see? Guys, look. Hey, that was the good. cup. It was upside down. And there's not, like, I guess I just drank way too many Coors Lights, huh? Look, now, that's, like, the I mean, head's that's brewing. That looks good, though. That looks good. Yeah, this is a, a stout. They're a nitro-dry Irish-style stout. One pint. And what kind of beer is that? The, the brand? The brand, the brand. Great South Bay Brewery. Nice. Yeah, so, we like to, uh... Yeah, we got this thing with trying new beers. We try, we try all the new beers we can. So I have to try it. Maybe, oh, yeah. maybe Stan can pull some string and get you sent some. Yes, hundred percent. That's another thing that I did want to possibly talk to Rick from GSB about is maybe we start sending cases to some of our guests so they could try it out. Uh, that's the best idea I've ever heard. Yeah. Well, we'll start with you. you should, yeah, you should start right now. Like like Chaz, what would be your favorite podcast? The one you just listen to or the one you come on, they send you a shirt, a six pack of beer, and a mask. Like a face uh, mask. That one. Yeah. Th- that one. Yeah, we're, we're you could have stopped to... at the you could have stopped at the beer. <laughs> I would get, I'm just kidding. That one, definitely. Yeah, the, the mask is gonna be a dog chew toy, the shirt's gonna be like a rag <laughs> to clean something. Steven. But, but the beer will go Those in. Those other come rags. <laughs> I love those Ness and Man guys. Like, uh. <laughs> I got I got a funny story about that. Listening one time, so I had a college roommate, or you know, I mean, in college, you uh, everybody's always wearing each other's clothes and stuff. Like, you know, we were all the same. We were all wrestlers. 
about the yeah. same size. Can I pause you right there? Yeah. So, Stan, we're painting the deck today. Do you see those shorts I was wearing? Yeah. That was my 125 pounders high school shorts that got <laughs> stolen. Someone else stole them, and then I stole them. Continue, guys. <laughs> That's how it goes. That's how it goes. So, anyways, one day, you know, I do a little cleanup duty with a shirt and then just throw it over, throw it over, you know, by the dirty clothes. Well, my, I guess one of my, my roommate came in my room and I don't know why he picked a shirt out of my dirty clothes instead of my closet. But I go to school the next day and I, I look and I'm like, is that my shirt he's wearing? And I look, he turns around, huge, just cum stain all, <laughs> all, all down the back of it. <laughs> That's definitely my shirt. That's definitely my shirt. Got him. <laughs> Got him. There's, there's two places to get rid of it, right? One, the shower goes down the drain. Or two, an already dirty shirt. Like, you're going to wash it. <laughs> Obviously not when you're, like, really good shirts. You don't know if it's going to somehow stain it. I don't know. Like, I, I've never, I don't think I've ever done a shirt. I wasn't even like you ever see the the memes and the shit on Instagram where it's like oh I found this sock under my boyfriend's bed and it's like a <laughs> a frozen yeah, sock. The, the sock is I mean I've done it in my life but it's just a lot of work. It just I've never yeah I'm not I've, a sock guy. I've always been a paper towel guy, not a tissue, a paper towel. Uh, oh, evidently I'm a uh, towel guy because Stephanie says I have to stop using the towels because they're never <laughs> soft again. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is the, Man, hold I'm on. an expert. This, I know wait, 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 Menace. Let me cut you off. This is the perfect conversation. We'll join. We'll have Randy jump in with us. Oh wow! This is a good one. I'm gonna get. As soon as he hops in here, I'm going right to it. Go right to it. Yeah, you're good. What's up, guys? Randy, welcome. Hey, Randy. What's up, man? What's going on? Randy, I've been playing my pudding for years now. Years. <laughs> so I know pudding. where it's going to go, right? right? So when I'm alone by myself, lotion's out, candles are lit, <laughs> I put a towel where I know it's going to go. Easy cleanup. Slightly to the left. Yeah, my left thigh. <laughs> <laughs> my hip we're in good shape oh. as long as you know I guess right yes so wait uh... and, and, and for some reason it goes outside that well I got the towel right Chaz that's right you got you always got a towel or, Randy you uh... remember Chaz yeah I remember Chaz yeah of course uh, well, he's a good old Texan boy trained in Florida <laughs> Yeah. So here, Chaz, something we should have said in the beginning. Can you actually go sideways with the phone? Oh, yep. Yeah. There we go. There we go. There we go. Now we got yeah. that whole thing. Yeah. So, Rand right. Randy, we weren't sure how to pronounce your last name. How do you pronounce it? Fainrich. Fainrich. Randy Fainrich. Welcome to Menace and the Man. Chaz, Skelly, we didn't give you a formal introduction, but welcome to Menace and the Man. 545 pound. You undercard specialist. What is it? <laughs> 145 pound undercard specialist. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's something we've even discussed with Randy. Is there's a lot of guys like you, Chaz, that are just like complete studs and just haven't gotten that recognition, haven't gotten that proper placement and whatnot. And now Randy, his next venture, that's kind of what he's getting into now. Yeah, kind of. Kind of, sort of, representing, you know, representing any of these guys uh, and girls that that need some sort of uh, extra exposure or awareness push. Yeah, like, Randy, something that me and Menace have always talked about is, like, if the UFC wants you to be a star, they can make you a star very easily. Mm -hmm. Like, they can, like, something, uh, especially with the coronavirus and whatnot, every day on the Instagram, they were putting out, like, old fights. Like yeah, they, they were course. putting up Phil Baroni fights, Mark Coleman fights, things like that, which are awesome. Don't get me wrong, but right. they they could have been pumping out Chaz Skelly fights, you know. And those guys' time is past. Yeah. You well, know? I think that I think that there's a you know there's a there's a little bit of a of 
planning that goes into that, right? I mean, their I think their their purpose in doing that is because we're in a pandemic and everybody's home um, and there's no sports to watch. Why don't you go watch UFC Fight Pass with all these uh, old legends of the sport and go figure out, you know, what this sport's about, the history of the sport. Uh, so I think they had they had a, a rhyme and a reason for doing that. But to your point, you're right. They, they could 100% be putting out, um, you know, fights of a whole bunch of active athletes that uh, that have had that have had fights in the past as well. So so because yeah. I remember, you know, I'm I'm you know the the second, the third, the fourth fight on the prelims, or you know, and I'm watching the highlights of you know that they put that like the UFC like. They got that UFC song and they're showing videos of Henzo Gracie, like arm bar people and Hoist and Ken Shamrock. Sure. I'm like, and I'm just like, yeah, but everyone knows who those fucking guys are. What about me? What about Chaz? Like, I yeah. actually fought this fucking card, but you're showing highlights of these guys. I don't. Those guys are already like in the Hall of Fame. Those guys are. How can we get there without? I don't know. Yeah, I'm. I'm with you. I mean, I think it's a little bit of, um, you know, the UFC does things a certain way, and they they've had the same music, the same intros, the same sizzles, the same uh, promos, um, particularly around live events for a long time, and it seems to be working for them and according to them, and so that's what they. Uh that's what they keep on doing. But well, they did sell the company for four billion dollars. So I guess, hey, maybe we should be doing something it right. <laughs> yeah, doing there's it. that. There yeah. is that. I get it. I get it. Me and Chaz don't make the highlight reel if we're not doing anything super exciting. Mm-hmm. But when I'm throwing people over my head and Chaz is fucking, you know, choking people unconscious. Yeah. I think no, I'm not, I listen, agree. I'm with you. I'm not saying that it shouldn't be uh, I, I know, I know. somewhere. You know? I'm over here talking to you like you still were for like, hey, make the change tomorrow. <laughs> Go in like the office my tomorrow. Call to like make switch the out the promos and put in different. Yeah. <laughs> Menace is like, so Randy, was it you that didn't put me in the fucking yeah. highlight reel? Well, no, I <laughs> when I first met Randy, really met Randy, it was in Australia? We were in Brisbane, yeah. Yep. Yeah. You, and like, yep. I came into, I had seen you many of times, but like, right. I wasn't actually fighting. So I actually went in there, I actually hung out in the media room. You were a guest athlete. Like, yeah. I was like, uh, hey, Randy, how do you eat this? And you're like, I was like, did you just bite it? And you're like, wait, give me a second. And I was like, I'm just going to bite it. Yeah. Bit into it. Best friends ever since. We also went out every night. That was also pretty awesome, too. That was, that's true. <laughs> I was, just Are you eating? I was just thinking about that story the other day. I, what was it? A passion fruit or like a uh, dragon fruit, right? Dragon fruit. Yeah. Yeah. And you bit oh, it like shell and all. And then he's like, you cut it into four <laughs> and eat it like a. And like, yeah. And then your face after it was terrible looking. Because the thing is, is if the. And I'm not taking anything away from Connor or anybody else, but. If the camera's on me, I'm going to make magic. Like, hey, like, there's a garbage can right there. Like, hit me with it. Like, let's see what happens. <laughs> let's see how many times you can hit me with until I fucking fall down. If, yeah. Especially if there's a camera. It's really bad when the camera's there. Yeah. Well, here's um, the thing, but, though. Like, not, not, a lot of, not a lot of athletes think that way, right? Like, not a lot of athletes, you know, I feel like the UFC or – MMA athletes in general are in this weird time where, you know, Connor's like the extreme side of like being in front of the camera, but then there's also like, you know, so-and-so, I'm not going to name anybody, but just so-and-so who like doesn't want to talk or do anything or like talk to anyone or nothing. Just, yeah. like, you know, I'm a, the, what is it? The, the Bushido code, the Bushido way. Like I'm just a martial artist. I want to get in fight and get out. And it's like, you know, you don't need to be Connor, but you got to be a little bit more than that if you want to actually make an impact yeah. on the sport because you are selling entertainment as well, right? And that's right. where the media interviews you got to be doing, social you got to be doing, digital you got to be doing, 
um, you know, you got to be creating kind of your own little wave outside of the promotions uh, push and outside of because I remember. So Connor hit the scene. Someone was like, "Yo, dude, you should try and fight this guy. Like, he, you know, I don't know, he's pretty good. He's whatever." I'm like, "Fuck this guy, whatever. Like, he's just a loud mouth, whatever." Sure. He's fighting, winning. I'm like, now this guy's got my attention, whatever. Then he like surpassed me. I'm like, well, I probably should probably start running my mouth. And then I was getting ready to fight with Carl Lamas. I'm like, fuck this guy. He can't touch me. I'll fucking piss on him. And he taps me out the first round. I'm like, oh, that's not for me. I just, that was not good. So it's not organic for me to be doing like the Connor shit talking. I think, yeah. I think a lot of people saw it, tried it, and were like, ah. It Some guys work. stuck with it for sure. You know. Well, I I agree I agree with that a lot because uh, yeah. it kind of happened. That that's kind of that's kind of the way it happened with me too. I was I had won four or five fights in a row, and uh, or you know like maybe four fights in a row, something like that. And they were talking about me possibly fighting Cub Swanson, you know. And so I started or Clay Guido or Cub, Cub Swanson. I think those were two names that have been brought up, and I was like, yeah, I mean that would be great. Either either one of the guys at the time. So I started kind of doing things to talk shit and it was kind of forced on me. Kind of, kind of, I was kind of, they were like, ah, oh, you need to, you really need to start talking shit about these guys. To me, it just wasn't organic. Yeah. And, uh, you know, cause I've had a lot of people say, I mean, I'm funny as fuck, you know, <laughs> you are like, really funny. Like, What's the deal? Like, why don't you have more, uh, why don't you get more exposure? I'm like, well, I've done a bad job of marketing myself. First of all, let's get that out of the way. I don't blame it on anybody else. But at the same time, you know, the promotion could could shine a little more spotlight on the uh, on the guys, the up and some of the other up and coming guys, some of the guys on the undercards. And, uh, sure. you know, it would probably help. It would probably help a lot with like with Chaz, if they of. followed you around your house for like a four day weekend, they'd be like, oh, my God, this guy is so funny. But I mean, I, they, they'd probably think I was an idiot. But. <laughs> well, because the thing is, because my buddy Ryan the Flair, like Randy, I don't know if you know Ryan outside the camera. Yeah. Like, he's fucking hilarious. Yeah. But as soon as the camera goes on him, he's just like, uh, I'll fight. Not, I'll fight. I'll, I'll fight. win the he fight. Raises up. Yeah. He goes business. He doesn't go yeah. with his when I said, I don't like, yeah, fuck this guy. Like, he doesn't yeah. like. I don't mean that as like he can't talk in front of the camera, but like he just goes like kind of like no, 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 uh, no. In real life, though, with the cameras on, because I've done some videos with him on the side, and it yeah. doesn't he doesn't project the same, right, right. But it's well. It's here's the way that I Go here's ahead, the way that I see it though. Yeah. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do something I don't. So I see it as two guys going in there and doing their job. So me, I'm going in there to do my job. You're going in there to do your job. I'm not gonna start verbally assaulting you to 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 sell really kind of selling myself out i i love to talk shit like i talk shit to my friends all day i mean it's what i really really enjoy doing uh we go back and forth like 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 chats if me and you were to fight that like the shit talk there would actually be like almost like dude really like you fucking you're the muscle mass of like a 12 year old and you're like well you're as short of the fucking like you're are you even like I think you're legally a dwarf. Like that would be like <laughs> funny friendship. Yeah, because it you know would be all in good fun. It would be all in good fun shit. Talk. Right. But the shit talking that gets like personal. I mean, we're gonna fight anyways. I, I don't. Yeah. I, to me, right. I'm just like, yeah, not when so. We start hitting on religion or fa- you know. Well, and I think yeah. I think that everybody kind of understood that that what you guys are referring to went a little too far between those two guys between Hubby right. and Connor. Um, <laughs> But that being said, you can, you know, it's a fine line between being authentic and forcing it. You know what I mean? Like the, the audience, the one thing about the audience is they can tell. They can tell in a heartbeat. And if you, if they yeah. feel like you're forcing it, if you're inauthentic, if it's not coming off natural, um, it's just not, it's not going to work, you know? And yeah, so, I agree with that. It yeah. also so, depends on your personality and your sense of humor. Because I thought the shit sure. I was so dialed in to the shit between Connor and Khabib. Yeah. Like when Connor. Yeah, of course. I think everybody was dialed into it, but I think that it, 
you know, I think the 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 religion uh, is too much. The religion, I guess, is too know, much. Yeah, you know, yeah, but it's too but, much. But I'm like, yo, it's really on now. It's fucking yeah. on. Yeah. This is now. This is not. I'm setting a fight now. This is a pretty personal. But you could you could make the same argument that you had that same excitement when you fought Aldo. He didn't get too personal on Aldo, like you know, family. Right. Yes, you know, like, for right, sure. But, but he like grabbed his belt. He was in his face. He was staring at him. You know, in between PR members. Yes. Like you know, you you felt that intensity in that in that rivalry. Same with Nate. Him and Nate were made for each other when it comes to media and and, and talking to one another. Um, I truly believe like they were just they are they are made to be nemesis in this sport, like because of the way they talk and the way they present themselves, who they are. But when it comes to you know when it came to that Habib fight, it got it got a little it got a little dark. It got so a little quick, dark. So quick question: When they do these big press conferences, for example, like Floyd versus Connor, yeah, that was like crazy. when they go show up in like you know, London or whatever, right. like is the promotion making money on them showing up and speaking or they are paying money for this promotion? Um, I mean, that's a good question. I, I'm, I, I don't think they charged for the attendance to those press conferences. So I don't think they made actual dollars there. However, you count, you know, you set that off by saying you're going to get X amount in media um, revenue and exposure, and then, you know, in turn, uh, okay. pay per view buys. So yeah, it's like probably you know, tr- translates on the back end. To pay sure. So it's like I'm going to spend in my head, I was like, Man, 200 grand I'm, for this world tour, but I'm going to yeah. make it back in the first round or something. You like, know what I mean? it's I'm, not, it, it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. You're just paying your costs up front and you're going to make it you. all back on the back end. Got you. Because in my head, like Converse Floyd, they probably couldn't have that tour for one year. Like no lie, like built it up, like like. Honestly, especially... you can hate on him, but Conor versus anybody, he has yeah. wit that you could put him on a tour versus anybody. Him yeah. versus yeah. Al- yeah. You... Go ahead, sorry. I, I was going to say, you know, we we cut people off all the time. It's what we do. People, mm-hmm. um, him versus Aldo was amazing. Him versus Khabib was amazing. Him versus Mayweather, like just he's a witty dude. He has an accent, so you're into it. Yeah. And the accent is so – I remember talking to, to friends about this, and I was like, the accent is, is like just the most crucial element to his to his media game, I feel like. Because if he sounded like you or I, it just wouldn't – Yeah, it just wouldn't, I agree. It, wouldn't, it would still be good. It just wouldn't be great, I feel like. You well, know? you and, see when people do the similar thing that Connor does, other than Chael – like I'll use Colby and Cejudo as the example. People call it cringy. Right. Well, Cejudo tries to be cringy though. You know? Like, yeah. yeah. This thing. I don't know if Colby tries to be cringy. I think Colby is just that's what he's doing, you know? Um but Cejudo like Either way, he, both of those guys are like this. Yeah, yeah. And the, and when, the number one thing that too, loser that, win, that, you still want to see him. That's the the number one thing too is that these guys can actually fight. It's not all talk, you know, and you see a lot of yeah. that with, you know, people. There was a there was a, a fighter, um, not too long ago. I, I don't remember what it, who he was or whatever or who it was, but he was on the like early prelims and he was talking like crazy, crazy stuff. And I think he was on the Connor card. And he was like, after this was fight, he tall and skinny? I was he tall and skinny? Remember. No, I know. I, I don't. I don't remember honestly. I just remember hearing this sentence, and it was after this fight, you'll remember my name, or you'll remember Conor McGregor was on my card, or something like that. And not only did he lose, which is fine if you lose, because again, if you can fight, the fans, the audience, they know that. They can see that. But he just kind of got like, you know, beat up, you know? And I don't don't say that to be disrespectful, uh, but it's just, you know, you could tell that his skill just wasn't there yet. That was me, Randy. I said that. It was so skilly. That was Chess Skelly. No. Um, and, uh, <laughs> was it really you? No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't fucking no. me. No. no. <laughs> I'm like, no, it I wasn't. I did get beat up on the Conor McGregor card, though. Oh. <laughs> uh, and again, but hey, I, so did I. So he did still I. wasn't there, and then, he, and, then he, and then he lost, and I don't think he's had a fight since or anything like that. So, again, the, the audience knows. You know, The audience knows if you're being authentic and if you can really – scrap and if you can then, then you have the respect of the audience 
you know, and the company for the most part. Yeah, for sure. You know, that, uh, I will say at first when Connor first started doing his thing, I, I kind of was a hater a little bit, but then I came oh, around. I was, like, I'm not everybody, one that a hater. Everybody on the roster was, I mean, if you, if you, if you're an athlete in 155 pounds or lower or 170 yeah. pounds or lower, you were a hater because you're like, I've been doing this for six, seven years. And this little slick talking dude from Ireland comes yeah. in and he's getting main events and doing this and flashy watches. Yeah. I mean, you, how could you not be upset? You know what I mean? But then, yeah. As, as I but feel then like I, I came pathetic. around. The, dude, the guy's a genius as far as exactly. like Mark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, he's actually like, funny. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Funny. So the funniest Very thing, funny. but the funniest thing he's ever said, some of the stuff that he says that people think are funny, I don't think is that funny. Uh, I'm like, ah, that's not that funny. But I do think so. The funniest thing he ever said was uh, Floyd Mayweather brings his backpack out on stage saying, why is this guy carrying a book bag? He can't even read. <laughs> yeah. That was the funny. <laughs> That was one of the funniest things I've ever heard. Yeah, that pretty press good. conference was amazing. <laughs> that was in Toronto, I think. That was amazing. That was such a that was such a crazy event, dude. Uh, that was one of the funniest slides I've heard in a press conference. Well, I was like, in oh, our reality, cool. so Connor having this take off, I was like, man, just being a good fighter and a badass isn't gonna cut it. No, hey, you need something else. So I started my YouTube channel. That's when we kind of looked up. I started cooking with a menace. I thought for sure I was going to have like a hundred YouTube. I like that shit. I watched all those. Oh, you got a fan yeah. here, menace. I, yeah, I, I like them. Dude, him, Randy, for a long time, I would be doing like, I'd be brought out to like international fight week and people would come to like cooking with the menace. They, I don't think they actually knew my name. Like <laughs> you're the, you're the, you're the chef, right? Like, that's, that's, <laughs> I was hoping you'd come and be like, oh man, sick fight. Like, no, dude, you're so funny on your cooking. I'm like, oh. yeah, like, R Randy, something that you know probably from social media, sometimes the numbers just don't come, but the brand awareness does. Yeah. But still to this day. As long as, yeah. Huh? Still yeah. to this day, people talk about cooking with the menace, even though he doesn't do episodes anymore. As long so as the is there, that's all that what, matters. What, you what bit of advice? What, what kind of advice would you give to somebody who – so with Sanford, uh, I've kind of started taking over some of the social media. Get a, give us a little bit more social media since they started uh, – they, you know, they sponsor us. They represent us. We represent them. They want to see Sanford MMA kind of out there. What kind of advice would you give to somebody like me who's trying to, trying to get the brand out there? Not, not like a person, but an sure. actual brand. Well, I think the number one thing, like the most important thing is you got to know what the goals and like the visions and goals are for the company, right? For the brand, like more exposure. Cool. But what's the actual goal here? Like, what do you want uh, Sanford MMA to be? What do you want it to, you know, what, what do you want to portray to the audience uh, and build around your audience? Uh, so I think that's number one and building out a plan, you know, to, to, um, to effectively hit those, those visions and those goals and those targets is, is key. But the biggest thing is, is consistency. Number one, you know, I tell people all the time, you have to post every day, you know, or every other day. Like there's no reason you should have one or two posts a week. If you're trying to build an audience because they forget now, it's social media. real quick as a post, like on the, on your yeah. wall or the story on the feed or the story. So it depends if it's, you know, if it's, I, I, I am a proponent of posting across the three major platforms every day. And I mean, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And we can get into Snapchat and TikTok and YouTube and stuff like that. But just, just yeah, but real this. quick, like if I'm putting something on Instagram story, does that count as? Yeah, I know. Yeah. So yes and no. I mean, if you're posting on your feed very often, then yeah, sure. One day you don't want to post something on the, on the feed, uh, on the feed, you could put on your story. Sure, absolutely. But posting on your story every day is not going to resonate the same as it will on your feed just for the simple fact of the engagement that a post on your feed can get. It can get likes, it can get comments, it can get shared, it can get saved, it can get added to a story. You know, there's a bunch of, whereas a story, you just view it. Maybe someone re re replies to you or whatever, but it's just not the same type of engagement. Okay. So back to your point, Chaz, I would say number two would be consistency and just you need to be posting something every day and posting something that is uh, of high quality. You know, if you don't have, let's say you have four really, really high quality photos or videos, 
if you don't have seven for the week, then just post those four and spread them out Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, whatever it is. Um, but you want to emphasize quality because you're building a brand. You want the audience to look at your feed and be like, damn, they have some really nice products. They do some, you know, they produce some really high level athletes. Uh, they have this, they have that, yada, yada, yada. If everything is shot on an Android or iPhone and it's shaky or it's blurry or it's this and that, bad lighting, you're just going to lose your audience because you got to remember if you, when you scroll through your phone, right? You're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. How long do you stop on a post? One second. Uh, depends on how big the ass is. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair okay. enough. <laughs> but again. I only said that because Stephanie's cut. She's right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> but again, that's that, that may, but like, that's actually true because it's eye catching, right? It's, it, it grabs your attention. If I'm scrolling yeah. through and I see something with dim lighting or I, I can't make out what it is or this and that, I'm going right past it. I'm not even worried Andy, about what it is. Randy, so, what's the stats on a professional photography picture versus like an iPhone photo? There's, I think well, the numbers are like, I mean, it, it all depends on what you're trying to shoot. I mean, I thought, this, this iPhone 11 right here can shoot as good a photo as any camera, honestly, um, if you're just hey, taking the camera iPhone out 11. and pointing and shooting. But <laughs> it gets into the, the camera quality comes into play when you have the right lighting. Maybe you're moving. You're trying to set up a, 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 you know, a backdrop. That's when you need to think about the quality of the photo. Do you, do you want to use, you know, this, which only has a certain, you know, uh, field of view, or do you want to use a nice camera with a d decent lens that has, right, so let's back up a little bit. We're getting wild. Like for we'll me personally. So, well, I was <laughs> posting all the time, like whatever I, you know, whatever I was doing since whatever. like May. I know. Can yeah. I, can you, can you, then, <laughs> then, you know, Pat Cummings, was like, D, what are you doing? You're posting like bullshit. And I was like, uh, okay. So now I only post things that I think are all are like awesome. If they're not awesome, I'm like, all right, not posting it. But and like all but, my rants, I'll put on my story, which sure. could probably go on my actual feed. Depends on what it is, but yeah. Well, but for, here's example, the thing. for example, here's a rant I have. Like, <laughs> so you 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 pull up to a stoplight, right? There's yeah. two cars already in at the light. Which car do you pull behind? What does it matter? The car that you think is gonna like tear out of the green light, right? Okay. The one with yeah. the least exhaust. So I hate when you pull up behind the guy who like, oh, yeah. and you're like, fuck, I should have definitely went behind the escape. I went behind the Santa Fe. I thought the guy in the Santa Fe fucking like, you know, doesn't even have a, you know, doesn't have a job. He's trying to get to his next fucking, you know, drug appointment. <laughs> like this guy's trying to get out of here. So yeah. I posted something like that the other day. Could that have gone on my, on my feed or? But here's the thing, you need, to, you need to, so first I'll back up a little bit to, to you posting everything you think is awesome, right? I forgot we were talking about social media for a second. Yeah. I started thinking about my pet peeves. I'm getting pissed off. Yeah. Well, the thing is like, right, can you, you can, you can post your pet peeves because people, people can relate with it. Like, fuck yeah. They reshare it. Like, I feel the same thing too. But you have to have a, a plan in place in order to roll that stuff out. If you just yeah, post it wild. and it's like everybody's going to be like, you know, oh, that's funny. Or what the hell what was that about? Whatever. You need to have a plan. So, like, if you were to do that, like, every Friday and you do, like, a minute and a half rant on your Instagram, uh, you know, that could be something. That's a piece of episodic content that's going to want, make people want to come back to that page. I have trouble doing the medicine the man every week, any day of the week. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got to get a calendar or something. Well, I'm here yeah. on Tuesdays for the most part. Right, Stan? No comment. Fuck off.
Yeah, he is. No, nah, we shoot for Monday or Tuesdays, <laughs> and the only thing that ever gets in the way is when Menace has overtime. Understandable. Understandable. What do you think about that? Hey, we're cooking in the background. Is that too loud? Is that super nope. loud? Can you hear that? No, not at all. Okay, okay. all right. Make sure. What are you making, Chaz? Uh, I'm not making anything. Stephanie's making some uh, hamburgers. <laughs> Don't judge me. Oh, Damn, say. we have to have this guy on like once a month minimum. Who, oh, Chaz? <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. God, I love this guy. <laughs> Bro, he's a Cooking with the Menace fan. Like, Chaz, when I when I have to work a double oh, with a Tuesday, show. you're it's gonna be Chaz and the Man show. <laughs> yeah, I'm down Let's for do it. it. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. So, so right now we have we have three people that can step in for the menace: Pat Cummings, Yves Edwards, Chas Kelly. Hey, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm actually pretty proud to be part of that group. Yeah. Yves Edwards is awesome. Pat Cummings is fucking awesome. Well, those are three guys that like I think think like me, or I I condone what they're saying, and are like pretty reliable. I can't. I'm actually jealous when uh, Pat Cummings comes around my dog, Winston. Yeah. Because they love each other. You and guys I'm were like, roommates for a little bit, right? Yeah, a short period of time. Just a short period. You want to talk yeah. about jealousy? You want to talk about jealousy? Yeah. I saw you guys are roommates. I saw you guys are bro. And I said, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was your bro. You're with the huge jazz. He's in my weight class and everything. You guys just. Having a good old time? I said, fuck that shit. I'll kick his ass when I go down there. Came down, I'm like, I like it, too. I get it. I get it, Pat. I get it. He's a good guy. Well, Ch- Chaz, do you have, like, a fight nickname? Uh, the Scrapper. The scra- All right. The Scrapper and the Man. I could see it in bright lights. Scrapper and the Man. So hey, be you, know, you know, though, uh, they thought <laughs> my very first UFC fight, I came out and they introduced me as uh, – no, for the weigh-ins, because you know they used to do the ceremony. You know the they used to do the ceremonial weigh-ins or whatever. Uh, I came out and they said the scraper, like, <laughs> and whoever was introduced to me was like, I think they call him the scraper because he's tall. You know, like Stephen Struve or <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Jesus. But even uh, Menace left a few names off that list. Alp Ozkilik is also a potential co-host when Menace isn't around. Jessica Penne as well. I've actually approached Jared Gordon about because him and Bilal Muhammad. Will I love Jared. Jared These are your replacements. Your replacements for me. Yes. Oh, I yeah. text. I told you the three people I, that I will be texting. Chaz being added oh, to it. Oh, you're the people. Well, you don't. You don't, the only person. So the only person he's ever texted for his replacement was Eve Edwards seven minutes into the podcast. I contacted. <laughs> I hit up Eve's like, yo, you want to fill in for Menace? He's like, yeah, 100%. We start the podcast. He's like, oh, I just got a message from Menace. I need you to fill in for me. He's like, did you talk to him? I'm like, no. Like, what is he? I talked to him at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Hey, Stan, do me a favor. What do you want? Go fuck yourself. (laughs) (laughs) But yes, at one point, so Jared's been down in Florida for a little bit. At one point, or back in the day, he was at Rufu Sport. Him and Bilal Muhammad were roommates, and they were talking about starting a podcast. Oh, he's not at Rufus Sport anymore. I didn't know that. No, him he, and Bilal are hilarious. Yeah, they yeah. they, they would yeah. have been a, they have such different personalities that they would have yeah. been a good podcast. Well, that that could have been a thing. Like UFC is like, hmm, two of UFC people living each other. Let's do like a fucking sitcom. Like, let's yeah, do you a, know what probably you know what probably deterred them from that, which those guys are hilarious together. Religion? The fact that when they would take pictures of their apartment, the fucking TV was sitting on the ground like it was a crack house. Like, <laughs> what the, the suit you have seen by these guys were probably sleeping on air mattresses. Like, yeah. what the fuck? Well, that wasn't their main house. It was just kind of where they so stayed I, when they were at training camp, right? I get it, but 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 yeah, but I, like I, Randy I was saying, I don't put that shit. Don't put that shit on your timeline. That's not quality. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Right. Or is it? That's like the fight. Andy? That's like the fighter house across the street from Rufu Sport. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, 
when 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 people in social media say that fans want to feel like they like they can relate to you, that's not what they mean. Where your TV's on the floor, <laughs> no, no. TV's on the floor. Hang on. <laughs> so Chaz, stand right now, and then like so. Look at my background. I got you know, his book of records. We got some you know, a sponsor. I got small. I got a small roof. Right, my ceiling down my basement, it's not big, right? So you're like, Stan clearly, you know, he's got yellow and maroon walls, <laughs> a picture of himself on the ceiling, Chaz on his couch, and then Randy's got his shit set up like, how big's your fucking house, Randy? What the fuck? <laughs> it's you're a, shit yeah, Randy, what do you work? That's not the yeah, really right? nice setup. <laughs> Thank you. Fuck. Uh, Vegas property is cheap, guys. You know, you guys try to, you guys want to be in New York where it's seven thousand dollars for a one bedroom apartment. Yeah, uh, right. <laughs> Gas is in Florida and Texas. Florida's expensive. Where are you at in Florida? I'm in uh, right north of Fort Lauderdale, Deerfield, right, right. off the highway. I'm like yeah. a mile from our gym. I've actually got a stolen picture in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I, I stole that. That's a really cool picture. Yeah, and you know what's funny? I talked about Alex Munoz's dad drew that and brought it over to our house randomly one day. And then when Alex and I moved out, I stole it. Wow. I said, yeah. I say, but you should, dude, you should go to Alex's uh, Instagram page and look at his artwork. That shit, dude, is, I, I don't need to. <laughs> Can you text him after we're done and tell him we're going to have him on the show next week? Yeah, I will. I will. All right, thank you. So wait. You yeah. can come back on too. Chaz, I'm you, sure you, yeah. guys would. you were originally at Alpha Male? No, no. Team Takedown, team uh, takedown. in Texas. And Alex started with in Team Takedown. We lived together for a period of time. Was Team Takedown with um... – Hendrix, Mark Lehman, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Mark Lehman, Johnny Hendricks, uh, uh, Jared Rochal, Jake Rochal. Yep. Because that guy was recruiting Rochelle. people at one time. Huh? That guy, like the owner, was recruiting people. Yeah. I remember I fought in Dallas. My buddy who wrestled for somewhere in Pennsylvania, if you said his name, I would be like, yep. Anyways. He was the down. Not that many wrestlers up. from Pennsylvania. <laughs> what? Yeah, not many. Good, good thing there's not that many wrestlers from Pennsylvania. But he was living in Texas and training at Team Takedown, you fucks. <laughs> oh, I wonder who it was. Anyways. Is he the dude, that, uh, about... is he the dude that's with OSP? No, he never he never fought. Nah, but isn't like OSP's wrestling coach? Isn't he <laughs> from <Tuesday? laughs> Anyways, so yeah. I'm fighting down. I was like, yo, dude, you're fighting down here? Like, you know, the owner of Team Takedown wants to meet you. Da, da, da. So I'm like, uh, okay. So I go over there, meet that guy. He's like, you got cryo here. So I was like, oh, sick. Maybe I'll hit that later before my fight. Then he's like, hey, take this guy out for dinner. The the guy pays for my steak dinner. Then he watches. He's like, hey, if you want, you know, we got another 45er. I need the training partner. I'm like, I'm not a training partner for anybody. Fuck off. You know? I fight, I fucking crush Jimmy. Uh, yeah, the guy, uh, the kid. Had us, yeah. yeah. And then uh, they're like, hey, man, you should move down here. Like, we'll buy you like a house. And like, I'm like, I talked to my manager about it. It's like, they own you down there. Like, they tell you when to eat, when to train. You know, like, it's not actually. And it's like all year round kind of it's not like, all right, you don't want to fight, do whatever you want. Like maybe a month after your fight, you have yours. But like after that, it's, and then it's, it's a 50, 50 split your purse. Yeah. I was like, oh, I, don't, I don't know. But like you have, you know, he had like a brand new fucking dually truck, a nice house, but he probably could do that on his own without the management. I don't know. But I was so, just like, yeah, I'm good. So here's my opinion on it, you know, being that I was there. And I, I, don't, I won't talk any – you know, it was like a big family there for a period of time. And we all hung out together. We had a great time together. Uh, the contract was basically set to where 
you were digging yourself into a hole. And, and as far as the, uh, you know, I really did like the atmosphere. I loved the team. We had uh, really good coaching. I never really had good partners, you know. To, I, I did. I had Chris Vice, who was a great partner uh, at the time. But, and there were people that would come in and out. But, um, you know, it, it was kind of a thing that was doomed to fail, you know. So you made a good decision, ultimately. By not right. going. Well, but, at the time, Johnny Hendricks was a champion. I'm like, well, something's right over there. You know? Yeah, I mean, and like I said, I'm like, I like, I, I liked everybody involved, so I'm not gonna say anything bad about it. But it was, you know, ultimately bad. You know, good decision I heard, on your yeah, part. I I heard it didn't end well. Whatever was yeah. going on with Team Takedown. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, it didn't end great. But you know, I have no hard feelings towards anybody. I just. You know, I just moved on. Like, this is an individual sport, so you got to do – ultimately, you have to do what's best for you. And, uh, you know, I just decided to move on. So, that's, yeah. Were you training there when I fought Hedis? Oh, yeah, dude. Uh, so, your you fight – You in and live there and train with. Yeah, that, that was me. Oh, that would have been awesome, actually. I wish I would have did it. I was, yeah, that was me. <laughs> that he was – I was in the suite with them, and they were like, what do you think about having this guy come, uh, come? Try? I was like, yeah, because I'd already watched your fights and stuff. I already knew who you were. Yeah. I was like, fuck yeah, that'd be great. Dude, you then, had just um, gotten into the UFC, right? Huh? You yeah. had just gotten. Yep. Yes, that's yep. you're it. You're the guy. So I was oh, actually God. looking at you guys more like opponents, though, at the time, because I was like, man, I I could fight either one of these guys, but uh, I I really hadn't uh, been ever into betting. And I actually, at that point, I won more money on you in that fight than I had ever bet ever in my life. <laughs> That's the truth. That's awesome. Because I watched you know, the film on him and I watched the film on you and I was like, oh, you're going to fucking crush him. And the, yeah. the, the line was like really close for some reason. Well, because we were both like we had the most takedowns in the division at the time. Yeah, but you could tell. Like, hey, you could the same takedowns as me? No, it was co it, completely different style. You could tell. Yeah, I was like, he's gonna fucking crush him, and then you did. <laughs> you, I think you re you might have retired him. I think he's out of I don't think he fought again, dude. You crushed him. Did he not fight again? Oh, you know what? He might have fought uh, Diego Brandau after no, that. No, he fought Diego before me. Oh well, then I don't think he did. I remember fight watching again. that film. Yeah, I don't think he did fight he again. Then. Diego, right? No, he got his ear cut real bad, I think. And then well, they stopped the fight. Him, no? Oh, he was beating. I think he was beating him. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, and no. And then Diego. Diego was after you, Menace. Was he? Yeah, so he fought you, uh, lost to you, then he lost to Diego, and then he hasn't fought since. Damn. You think, did he get cut? I don't think so. I think he just stopped fighting. That's so weird. Yeah. That guy's like life listen, gets in the way. Eight years in the UFC, yeah. I fought for ten years. I'm good, especially with the the three split decisions. That really, I was like, "Fuck this shit! I'm not doing this shit." You know. Well, uh, well, even like you, menace, you got out of fighting good with no injuries. Some guys have those injuries yeah. and shit that just uh, hampers them. You know what I mean? I'm that guy. Yeah, I'm like, the, like a Chaz. Sure. Yeah, that could be what happened with Jimmy Hedis. We gotta get him on the show. We gotta find this out. Yeah, He'll good. definitely get on. He's not doing anything, right? What's he doing? <laughs> he's probably he's probably like a goddamn doctor now, like crushing it. <laughs> he actually seems like he seemed like he was a pretty intelligent guy. He probably yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's like I'm not coming on your fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> And then, dude, the last guy I fought, Tay Edwards, hasn't fought since. It's been over a year now. Yeah. Well, I, think he, got, I think he got cut. I think he got cut. Did Who? he? Yeah, because he, he, had that, he had that KO on Contender Series. Right. And he fought Dan Ma Don Madge. Don Madge and Don Madge uh, knocked, knocked him out in the second round. And then he fought you. No, he fought – yeah, no, he fought you after that. And then you you beat him, and then I think they released him. Really? Yeah. He was tough. 
Like, you can't beat fucking Bermudez? You're out of here. Like, what the fuck's the matter with you? <laughs> you fight skin. The thing is, is like, with my last fight, it was like, either I retire, either I win or retire, or I lose and I get cut. Yeah. After five in a row, they can't. Well, even- I don't know, though. I think you had, I think you had some clout with them. I think that they wouldn't have, they would have probably uh, gave you a I made people. You know, I've been there. I was there four years. I have seen a lot of athletes, you know, overstay their welcome with the UFC that, that, that probably sh- shouldn't have been there in the first place. How many people have had four losses in one state around that aren't? I can think of a couple. A few, but very few. I think, is Gray Maynard one of them? I think Gray Maynard, Jessica Evil Eye. And I don't know. There's definitely been a few. But I remember. Gilbert Melendez? Who? Gilbert Melendez? Mm. Uh, I, I know one. I don't well, know well, well, the thing is, All three of those people are studs. So, yeah, I'm seeing Gray had four, I remember. Jessica. How many is Michael, Michael Johnson, possibly? He's, he's lost a few in a row. He's a total stud, too. But he's a fucking. He's Michael. Good. The thing with Michael, though, is that he's so fucking good, man. Yeah. It's just like a little tight. Like sometimes he has just like one second of a lapse and it, uh, yeah. it costs yeah. him. Dude, yeah. I love that guy, man. He's a great training partner. He's a great, he's a good, good dude. Yeah. I hate to see him lose. I yeah. fucking hate yeah. it. He's had three fight skids, Michael Usually Johnson. Usually in it when he loses. Yeah. And all, all of his, I mean, all of his fights. Gaethje, he was. And losing. he's crushing. Like Josh he'll be Emmett. crushing somebody. Yeah. 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 He's fun he to watch, man. He's a good. He's a good actor. But yes, we were. Uh, I'm a big Michael Johnson fan. When we came down, uh, me too. We were down there in May of last year. And Michael Johnson, Menace hits up Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson's like, yeah, I'll come through and party. So he came to our house. <laughs> we had a house in Miami. Michael Johnson brought the dog and shit. Hypothetically, him and all his boys were smoking blunts and shit on our back deck. All of a sudden, we're yeah, like... It's 2020. Yeah, all the, everything's yeah. hypothetical here. <laughs> so then, all of a sudden, we're like, yo, where's his dog? We lost his dog. <laughs> It, it, it was a party house so we had the back door open the whole night you know what i mean like it was just uh we were hanging out all of a sudden we're like yo we're on the water too so we're like yo did his fucking dog oh, no. did his dog jump in the water or something we all start sweating it now i remember t- we're watching fights we have like 30 people there i remember turning to menace and i'm like yo should we stop and help him find his dog and menace is like Psh, wasn't my fucking dog <laughs> you know, like that's the <laughs> So then we all start like get we all like start looking for the dog. We find the dog on the and Michael Johnson is like a, a white black dude at that point. Like he turned white, like he thought his dog was gone type thing. So we find his dog on the side of the house eating through the garbage, like hidden off, and was like, "Oh God, thank you, we didn't lose his dog." I started thinking the worst, like man, we fucking lost his little. You know his dog Pablo, right? Pablo, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. We almost lost Pablo. I didn't budge. I was like, eh. I also never owned a dog, so. Yeah. yeah. Menace isn't a dog person. I was just like, hey, wasn't meant to live. I don't know. <laughs> bad dog. I don't know. Bad, you should train it better. I don't know what that bad, is. bad dog. <laughs> bad dog. But yes, Chaz, you're not the first Sanford person, Sanford fighter. H kickboxing guy to come on here and sing Michael Johnson's praises. We had Ong and Gilbert on here like two weeks ago talking about how good Michael Johnson is. We got to get yeah. him on here for an official interview, like official, like man's the man. Like we just shot the shit with him. Watch fights. Yeah, let me tell you, let me tell you what Michael's problem is though. And I hope, I hope he fucking watches this. The guy's delusional. He told me once that I haven't taken him down in two years. <laughs> This guy is so fucking delusional. Dude, I can't wait till he comes back and I'm cleared just so I can just wax him during wrestling practice. I can't. I hope you watch it. Y'all want him to watch this. I think you should tag him. Yeah, I'll chop the clip up and send it to him. 
We yeah. should put, you should set some odds on who gets more takedowns. Wow. You gotta give me time to get in shape. You gotta give me time to get in shape. Yes. We'll send it to the Vegas. Some odds oh, on who gets more takedowns in a round and then let people bet on it. I fucking, I, I mobbed the mat with this dude. No doubt. <laughs> The so Randy's brain right now is like going like he's like, man, all you gotta do on Instagram, make a no. post, <laughs> get some more paint downs, get some engagement down, and then put up the actual video you got scrapping. I'm and actually, hey, there you go. I'm, actually, I'm not even thinking about that. I'm just like, man, can I be there when we when we have this <laughs> wrestling practice? Hey, hey, dude, I wrestled, hey, I'm the, not man. You. I wrestled the man. Very, very eel like, like. Very ill, like <laughs> he's no, you, you, you're like I have his whole leg. This yeah. dude's doing a backspin and grabbing your ankle. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> no, well, we have some good go. We 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 yeah. have some probably very entertaining goes for sure. But we we both uh, we talk so much shit, man. But yes, there's a lot. But he's of delusional. Food. He's delusional. But hang on, real quick. Michael Johnson is better at 155 than 145. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. I'm saying uh, we have two yeses. I think, yeah. man, to be honest, I I like him better at 145. Wow. I think he does better at 155. Yeah. I just I think, dude, I think he I I could I like him better at 145. He's not big. Yeah, but he knocks motherfuckers out 155. 145, he gets decisions. What do you mean? No, no I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying. The thing just, I, I think he should. It's just my mentality of like uh, weight cutting and uh, just. I think that 10 pounds zaps his like kill, like sleep power. Oh, no, his hands are fast as shit. Man. I know. Dude, he has the fastest hands. Who's he knocked out? Fourier. Fourier. Well, no, I think at forty-five. Oh, at forty-five. No, no, no. Well, I think, no, no, no. I think, yeah, like you said, maybe his at power. Fifty-five. He's fucking knocking out some of the best. Getting, getting fucking Khabib on 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 skates. What do you mean? That's because fifty-five is garbage, man. Forty-five is where it's at. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I think I went to fifty-five for that last. The, I just want to get the quick dub and be out. That's what I'm talking about. That's I'm not, I'm about to do that too. I'm about to jump up to 55, just get a quick dub real quick, get a payday. <laughs> so, Randy, real quick, can you tell – so, me, me, you, and Stan, we had a talk last night. Uh, you parted ways with the UFC uh, on your own terms. You didn't get fired, right? Yeah, well, it was kind of a, it was kind of a, a mutual kind of separation, sure. Okay. Oh, that doesn't sound mutual. <laughs> Anyways, you know, business is business with them. So, yeah, you know, very. You guys know how it goes. A ve- a You're a number, right? Go, so, You're a number, right? Everybody is. Everybody yeah. is. But look, that's good business too, right? Like, yes. You know, you you know, it's just when good. when when feelings get invested, right? Business can get jammed up. Yeah. Sure. They they are very good at not letting feelings get uh, invested. I've been there. Anyways, um, so you started your own business called Prolific Media. Prolific Media. So, so Chaz was saying, "Hey, Stanford MMA was so." Chaz, wait. Stanford Stanford. MMA has Stanford. Stanford. Was that Stanford? Yeah. Sounds a little smarter. People are going to start Googling yeah. Stanford MMA oh, and not find anything. Stanford MMA. Right. You guys have a pretty good – you guys – there's capital over there, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, Stanford Health, there's capital for sure. So, like, Randy is doing things and, and pushing things up. He's for hire. Yeah. Are you not? Yeah. Yeah, so let me explain. You're like a prostitute for like social media. Well, hold on. Uh, I went to be bought and help it. Sure. Or get it off. Yeah, well, mm, I think your 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 terminology is a little a little out there, but sure, it's close. So, 
basically, I told these guys last night. Um, so I was at UFC for four years um, and had a great, had an amazing time. Right, was in social media, started at at the, the entry level, uh, worked my way up to uh, director level. Uh, by the time I left the company in um, in December, and had, was able to foster some amazing relationships. You know, Menace included, and everybody else that, that I've, I I still kind of talk to to this day. Um, but one of the things with the UFC uh, and any kind of major organization, uh, whether it's sports or not, is like we talked about is not everybody can get their just due. And it's not necessarily on the promotion to do that. Um, but it would help if they were to, you know, kind of boost up, every, you know, boost up everybody rather than hone in on a couple couple people. Uh, but again, not their problem. That machine moves so fast. There's so many athletes. There's so many fights. They're almost forced to only kind of highlight what they can highlight and move on. Um, and after being in that machine for so long, you start to think like, hey, you know, th these guys, you know, whether it's fight pass prelims, early prelims, or even pay-per-view, that's not the main event. You know, these guys are, are guys and girls are leaving a lot of exposure, um, a lot of awareness, engagement, and a lot of revenue on the table. And if there's any athlete in any sport that could use more revenue, I mean, everybody can use more revenue. I'm not saying that nobody can or not, but if there's any athlete that, that can, um, that's their advantage. It's an, it's an MMA athlete. Uh, yeah, you know, for sure. Get into all of it, but you guys know how the the pay structures work and across MMA and and all that stuff. And so, you know, when I was at UFC, I would always have you guys know what fighter check ins is, right? Tuesday, you get to the the city, you check in. I would always try to have a fifteen minute to twenty minute window with every single athlete on the card, um, and say, hey, here's your social numbers across Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Here's where you are. Here's where you need. You know, here's where you could be. Um, and here's like the, the, the right here in terms of engagement or following, et cetera. And I got, got to the point where a lot of athletes were hitting me up outside of these check-in days and saying, you know, I really appreciate that. Or thank you. Or, Hey, can I, can I get this or can I do that? Et cetera, et cetera. And so, um, you know, earlier this year, it kind of just occurred to me after having some talks with some people, you know, why, why don't I do this? And, um, so we did it. And so Prolific Media Group is a, a full service multimedia company. Uh, I like to call it the nexus of multimedia. It's where you can, you can build out uh, your social and digital footprint. We handle everything from photography to videography, mm -hmm. editing, um, you know, whatever you want, graphics and templates. Uh, we can post for you, um, you know, analytics, uh, anything you need, you know, master classes, if you will. I know that's a trademark thing, so sorry, master class, if you're watching this, but you know what I mean. Like any type of class or schooling you want, um, analytical work, like I said. So, uh, so I just did it, and we started it, and um, and that's kind of where we are now. And I, I don't want to sound salesy when I say that because anyone that's worked with me in, in the MMA space knows that my intention is pure when it comes to this. There's just not a lot of knowledge amongst MMA athletes when it comes to this stuff. And I want to be the one to help them kind of see that, find that, monetize it and grow. Um, and so that's, that's kind of what, where I'm starting. I'm starting in the MMA bubble because I've been here. My, my lineage for the last four or five years is in this space. So, uh, so that's what we're doing. And that's where we're starting. So and for me, uh, I think, uh, Oh, sorry. When I hear you uh, say that, I feel like, well, number one, Randy, you're not about to take my fucking job with Sanford, okay? <laughs> All right, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. But when 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 guy when people are representing young fighters, or not even young fighters, fighters that have been in the game for a long time, it sounds to me like some of the best people that could connect with you would be guys that are representing fighters that have a, a stable of fighters where you could really like help these guys um and i hate to give but i feel like there's one manager out there that's done a pretty good job ali has done a pretty good job of giving all of his fighters an identity on social media and doing this and doing that and building them and, and it gets them paid a little more between the other athletes and 
Yeah, listen, all of that stuff is on the table. I mean, we're, we're constantly engaged in, in talks with other athletes, management companies, brands. This isn't I, – I, I say I'm beginning in the MMA bubble because it's what I know, but, uh, you know, we're talking to small businesses here in Las Vegas. We're talking to other athletes, uh, like I said, management groups, uh, brands. This is a full service multimedia group. And I'm, I only say I'm starting in MMA because, like I said, this is where I come from and I know this sport very, very, very well. Um, you know, I know the business of it. I know what the audience likes, I feel like. I know what, what, to, what to put out there that's going to be engaging. Um, but yes, to your point, Chaz, I mean, yeah, it would be great to, to bring on a management company and then within our agreement is, you know, we will provide X, Y, and Z to these athletes. You know, that's, that's definitely a possibility. Um, I've built some relationships with some managers that I, you know, I've reached out to, uh, but I've also built a lot of relationships with athletes. And, and so um, it's about finding the right fit. Like, that's why I mean, I, I'm not salesy in this. Like, I don't want to just work with anybody. Um, you know, there's a yeah, lot of sure. athletes, brands, people that just don't care about social media. And I can, you know, talk till I'm blue in the face. They're still not going to care. And so it's like, I'm not going to force that on you. I, you know, you, you don't care. Don't, that's fine. Don't do it. It's whatever. But the people that are passionate about uh, what they what they provide to an audience, passionate about their own identity and their own brand and what they want to promote and how they want to be promoted, those are the people I want to talk to. So I, I, we, we came up with the name Prolific Media Group because we really resonate with that word prolific. I, 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 we want to work with people that are that feel that they are prolific in what they do in life, whether it is fighting, basketball, art, whatever the hell it may be. Um, yes, question, Mr. Menace. Yeah, that's me. Uh, so let's say some guy named Pat is watching. What's up, Pat? Not Pat Cummins. Just His name is actually Patrick. So Plamat, his his name's Plamat. That's his last name. Let's say he's watching the podcast. <laughs> he's like, he's like, hey, Randy's out here, you know, making people's social media blow up. I'm I haven't got laid in like over a year. I'm trying to make my Instagram awesome. My can, Tinder. No. Can Pat no. blah, 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 hit no. you up and you can help him out? You have to have a blue check. No, no, not at all. But we're not in the service of getting you laid. That's not what well, I'm Well, I mean, no, no. Like, hey, man, I'm trying to make my Instagram like, hey. I'm trying to blow my Instagram. I'm trying to make Instagram. my Instagram legit. So when I'm at the bars, I'm like, hey, this is actually me. Yeah. Like, but also, if I have awesome pictures on my Instagram that I can post to my Tinder. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. not a terrible thing. Well, you're so you don't only work like what my guess. My question is like, is pro? I don't know, prophilic, prolific, prolific. <laughs> I never said it. I just hear it. <laughs> prolific. Shut up, Chaz. You fuck. <laughs> prolific. <laughs> open to the public or only for businesses and athletes? It's open to anyone that wants to to build a brand and build a business around their brand. So if okay. you are just Joe Smo and you have, you know, a hundred followers and you want to build your Instagram, but you have nothing to offer. I, we can't help you with that, right? We need to, this is a relationship. This is a partnership. You have something to offer with the podcast. You have something to offer with fighting. You have something to offer with basketball. You have something to offer with X, Y, and Z. Um, but you, you have to have a service to, other Joe was right. Yeah, yeah. You have to have a service. You have to have. You have to. You have to put product a niche in something that you want to put on, right. Like if you're if your whole thing is that I just want to build my Instagram so I can look cool in front of girls, like I can't help you with that. Or I want to look cool in front of my friends, I can't help you with that. But if you're a you know weightlifter and you want to build your profile around weightlifting, uh, or you're vegan. Or you're a fighter again, or you're this. You, you're a really good painter, or artist, or cartoonist. All okay. those things, you have something to offer. Yes, we want to help you build that. You have uh, a niche. Yeah, I mean, and, and it doesn't. You know, basketball is not a niche. Fighting really isn't a, isn't a niche anymore. Um, but you just have something to offer, right? And, and if you want to build your 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 business and your brand, 
uh, because you feel like you have something to offer to the world, then we want to help you get that out there. So I do think that, uh, that, that in mixed martial arts, I mean, there's a huge need for what you're doing. So, I mean, I'm, I'm glad that you're doing it. I, I think, I think there's an absolute enormous need for what you're doing. Thank you. But on a selfish note, uh, if you're taking pictures and you want to get the perfect angle for a dick pic, could I ask you your advice? My advice would be to not send that dick pic. Oh, what? <laughs> what? You're a professional athlete. You've seen the I'm news. I'm not going to post it to my timeline. You've seen how these things get out. Okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to save you from you. All right. Good advice. Good advice. Yeah, you know what? You're a professional. Chaz. Yeah. Well, hang on. Chaz, you shoot from the bottom. Exactly. You shoot from the bottom. Yeah, it's a professional dick pick, pick taker. Can, can no, I I'm say not. No, I'm not. that's like the opposite? That's like the opposite of a big girl taking would, a profile yep, pick. Exactly. That's what my head was he just goes, thinking. Oh, I like that. I like that. She goes from the top, so you can't see my double chins. Man. <laughs> so where that came from in my <laughs> in, in my world, where that came from is Gregor Gillespie used to do reasons why a girl's undateable, and that was one of the things. If a girl takes overhead pictures, she's undateable. Remember? Absolutely. You remember those menace? He he stole some Kyle Sermonero. Well, I didn't know Cern back then like that. I just yeah. knew Gregor used to post them, and it would be yeah. like ten reasons a girl's undateable. The list definitely got up way higher than 10, but it was just like, if she parties with her mom, the girl's undateable. Hmm. You got any other menace? <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I disagree. Know, yeah. If she does hair, I think that was one of them. Yeah, like they, they were funny. <laughs> if she's a hairdresser. But yeah, Scrag Do you think gems. that, speaking of Gillespie, do you think girls find the greasy hair look more attractive or like the uh like feathered like natural hair look more attractive because gillespie's hair it, it it strikes me as very oily the way that he well, looks very oily in, in the oily pictures i guess it's him after like a workout guy sweats a lot yeah. He does like Yeah, you're probably right. Bro, you're like he's right. one of those guys you'll finish a workout with him, you'd be sitting like, you know, you finish a workout, you sit down, you're not on top of each other, but like, you know, like a foot and a half away from each other. His sweat would pull up by him, and then there'd be like almost like a piss stream of sweat, <laughs> like going you're like Bro, what the fuck? <laughs> Like, you know, when you pee down and it pulls up and then, like, one little stream goes away from the pot. Like, dude, what the <laughs> fuck? He's like, yeah, dude. Man. Like, yo, you're fucking sick. Lucky for me, I'm fat as fuck. I sweat gravy. So mine just kind of yeah. sits. I've actually tapped out to Gregor multiple times, not because he's actually submitted me, but because his soaked shirt was suckless <laughs> in my mouth. Like, was blocking my airways. That's the worst. That yeah. That's the worst. Yeah. And like after you tap, you're like, it wasn't because you were hurting me. Like you fucking, you showed me. <laughs> you didn't actually I have it. I wasn't choking at all. If I you didn't have your shirt on, fucking you wouldn't have got me, dude. Yes. Gregor sweated profusely. I remember, so I don't know how it is down at H Kickboxing, Sanford MMA, but at Long Island MMA where me and Menace used to train together, there was a thing where there was only a handful of people. I've menaced maybe once or twice, but like five, six rounds into pro class, you go, all right, I'm taking this shirt off. So then it's like, this guy is completely drenched in sweat. That was Gregor. So five or six well, we started, rounds. We, no, we started doing that at the old gym because in a fight, you wouldn't have a shirt on. So we were trying to train for being able to like control people being super slippery and sweaty, but it was very counter. Like, nobody could hang on to anybody. No, you know, like, there were days where it was just slip and slide. Like, grab the guy, slip off. Go take a step, and you're slipping. Like, it was just... And we, most of us shaved our body, so... Yes. <laughs> it's more aerodynamic for when I fight. Yeah. 
but I could see Usman being that guy down at Sanford. Sweaty? I, I, don't, know, uh, I, I, don't, I don't remember. The take his shirt off mid practice. A perfu- yeah. Luke hey, Rockle. The guy's Luke, got Luke great Rockle. pecs. Both those guys have great pecs. Why wouldn't yeah. they? Luke, Luke walks in with, wearing board shorts and basically takes his shirt off before practice starts. And then uh, just just practices in board shorts and no shirt. You know, Henry's like, hey, everybody, put your shirt on. He's only talking to Luke, you know, because he's the only <laughs> guy with no shirt on. What, what's your <laughs> issue with Luke? Uh, dude, I love Luke. I, I, he's, I he's like a, him too, but he's he's a dick, but, like, I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's a... Uh, He's a he's he's a character, you know. He's a different character, but but he's actually a very very nice guy. Like he's a on the right. Yeah, I mean, I could see how well, he's think born he's got with that, that like. He was born he's got with that, that like point. arrogant, arrogant thing to him. No, I yeah. get it. But dude, he's never been, and I've hung out with him outside of fighting, and and uh, he's never been. I mean, he's always been cool. To me, he, but and, you've definitely proven yourself, though. Well, like, yeah, you're in the UFC. You're on a winning streak. Like you're choking motherfuckers out. Like you train hard. You work hard. Well, know? we also did strength conditioning together every day too. So we were like in the same strength conditioning group three days a week for however long. He, he's probably a guy too. The more time you spend around him. Wait, too. and where's this coming from, Menace? Did you have a bad interaction with Luke Rockhold? No, well, no, I just heard from other people actually that he just like. Well, no, it's not. It's not. It's kind of give you like a. That's it, dude. It's common knowledge. Look, look at any thread where Luke's name is mentioned, and then people are gonna go down the thread for fucking four hundred comments, and it's gonna be like, "This guy's a fucking douchebag." Yeah. <laughs> what did he do that one time on that dating show? Which is like, oh, what did I he do? It's, it's, it's a super dickhead move, but to me, it's actually amazing. Wait, you I know, didn't see it. He I, went on Randy. Do you know? Do you recall? He was on like Millionaire something. Yeah, Millionaire Matchmaker. Like millionaire Matchmaker. Yeah. yeah. He he went on there. He's on a date with a girl. He's like right for the girl. Like that witch is pretty hot, and she's like looking at him like. No, oh, I think he he asked the girl a but question. He went home. He left with the waitress, <laughs> or some or something in that ballpark. <laughs> I'm not. I'm no. not. Don't me on it. It was something that, like, and she, the girl left it like you're a fucking dick. He's like whatever, and then took the waitress home. I was like, wow. I, I mean, this, <laughs> no homo. The guy is really good. Look. He's really good. Look. Good looking he guy for sure. Has every like he like of most like like maybe I don't know how funny he is, but good looking, badass, can defend me, money, like he's got a lot of those those boxes checked off. It's looks. he's a it, it, I mean he's and when you talk to him, when you actually talk to him, he's not a he's not not funny. I mean he's a funny dude. He's you know he's just a dude like I, us. You know I, we can fucking chill out. I Talk do remember uh, uh, somewhere on an interview they asked Dana White who is the least, like who's not a good guy with girls, like who's the least attentive guy when picking up a girl, and no hesitation he was like Luke Rockhold, and then uh, that's a lie. Yeah, no, but then he said he's like, can he get girls? Yeah, he's a good looking guy, but once he opens his mouth and he said something like he's a fucking idiot or something like that about Luke Rockhold. I uh, yeah, I mean I don't know. I just think, uh, yeah, from what I've seen, that's not not accurate. I think like, we all enough. know that one guy that doesn't have to say anything, and girls is kind of like, I want to bang you. And they're like, all right, it's okay, I'll look over here. And you're like, what? Me- Menace, Ryan Needle. Yes, that's exactly what I'm thinking of. Yeah. I used to say that well, about there's a few like, that need a little bit more, and like that's where you're like, you're actually retarded. I can't yeah. deal with you. But I think Luke has a, you know, at least a, hey, I like uh, dolphins. 
Oh my god, me too. You know what's funny about dolphins? They like to fuck a lot. You wanna uh, go spend seventy percent of our day fucking tomorrow? <laughs> That's what dolphins do. I, I mean, listen, maybe like I'm throwing the show short. I don't think Luke Rockhold will come on the Menace the Man show. Oh, you're definitely so. I bet he will. We've had. I bet yeah. he will. We've had Dana on will. Menace. We just need to We've get who? Dana. Yeah, but he's dude, actually Luke's, promoting shit. Looks pretty cool. Luke's just a dude. He's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I think he will come on. I All think right. he will come on. We yeah. just need to. You sh- know who you should have shoot you know the who shot. You have on. You know who's a lot smarter than you would think he is. Go, Matt Mitrione. We've had Matt on. Oh my God, Matt's. A, oh, oh my okay. God, okay. why have I not hit up Matt Mitrione yet? We've had him on. Huh. Way back in the day, but we should yeah. get. We need to get him back on. Dude, so, Matt's awesome. He, <laughs> dude, he's a he's a real ass dude. He's he's smart. He's actually Randy, very intelligent. Randy, fucking Stan, Stan, tell Randy how many people we've had on the show. Let Stan. I actually want a list, and you to tag everybody we've had on the show. It only lets you tag 20 people. What? You can only tag 20 people. <laughs> you can't, like, what do you mean? Like, on an Instagram, like, story, you couldn't just be like. <laughs> oh, on a story? I'm not sure, but it's probably 20 as well. I haven't checked the story. Randy? Randy, Randy would know that answer. Randy? 10 on Instagram story, yeah. yeah. But we had Mitrione. Mitrione was awesome. We had him on one of the yes. earlier episodes. We definitely got to get yes. back on. So when we called him, because we were just a phone uh, audio podcast back then, he answered the phone, and I'm like, Matt Mitrione. And he goes, uh, only if you're paying. And me and Menace, <laughs> me and Menace look at each other like, what the fuck does that mean? And then I go, Matt Mitrione, you're a Menace and the Man. He's like, yeah, only if you guys are paying. And then me and Menace look at each other again. We're like, what the fuck? And then we go, uh... And he's like, oh, I'm just fucking with you. I'm just fucking with you. No, I, I, remember the, I remember the episode now. He was amazing. We got to get him back on. Yeah, he was dope. But a character. And I, we, yeah, we didn't even. Back then, we were just video. He's the type of guy you probably need him on. Well, we just had audio then. You need him on video. Dude, he'd probably be flossing his teeth the whole time. He's a fucking hygiene freak. Is he? Yeah. He's, he'd probably he's be fucking kids, too. Huh? How many kids does he have? I don't know. I don't know. I know he's got... I think he's got like maybe three or four. I I don't know. I don't know about that. I've seen uh, that he's back down there. I know he's... Yeah, he's here for uh, I think a few weeks right now. Yes. Um, But dude, great guy. Great guy. Yes, but even Randy with prolific media, you should definitely... If you're sending out feelers, send into slide into Sanford MMA's DMs. Hang on. Real quick, though, uh, Randy. So, you know how much fighters make. Yeah. Can we talk about how much it costs for Prolific to spot you? Yeah. Well, I mean, it all There's depends on, There's it levels. All depends on what, what, what they want, what somebody wants, right? I mean, if you want, again, if you want just photography – you want just videography or you want just some video edited, um, that'll be something. If you want, uh, you know, you, your social handled completely, to analytic reports to uh, photography, videography, editing, etc. that's going to be a different cost. It all, there is so no... What's the lowest price to the highest price? It, all, it depends on the volume, though. There's nothing... $5,000? $5. Could be. Could be less, could be more. Does depends on what you what you want, really. Also, I mean, how big is the team? That uh, you're... We, have, we have three people right now. Three solid three. people, though. Yeah, and and they are they actually are very good, very good people. Um, we're working with uh, uh, a designer and a videographer slash editor who's been helping out a lot with uh, with one of our clients, Francis. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's been it's been. The only thing is, like Francis has money. I mean, a lot of people have money, and a lot of people can make a lot of money on social. I mean, look, look. I mean, there's listen. There's there's athletes that you can name right now that probably make more from their social media than they do their UFC contract. And I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. You can name at least two of them. Paige Van Zandt. There's one. Demetrius Johnson. Well, he's in one now. I think he's in one, but. Um, 
But yeah, he was making good money on Twitch. Yeah. There, there's more Twitch guys. Sean O'Malley makes a lot of money on Twitch. Kills it. Makes well, good money. So real good quick, money. Randy, I don't want to go in his pocket. I'm trying to have the Menace of the Man show on Twitch. Dan shut it down and wanted to have it on Facebook for I don't know what the fuck reason. What are your thoughts on that? Say that again. Your, your audio cut out. I wanted to have our show on Twitch, which we were doing for months. And then Stan was like, I don't know. I think we should go to Facebook. So now we're on Facebook. What's your thoughts on that? I think that if – I think it might be easier for you guys to qualify for what Facebook has is ad breaks. So it's kind of like YouTube YouTube, and like a revenue sharing service. Um, I think with Twitch, um, it's good to be on Twitch. It's very good to be on Twitch, but I think you need to build a following there first before you do Which start. I already have maybe 800 followers. I had subscribers when I was gaming – but I stopped gaming because I'm doing the show and working and stuff like that. Consistency. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And Send your gamers to me. Send and uh, I'll show them what a real man looks like playing some Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> yes. are, we, are we friends on? Dude, no, you not. never... You, I, I told you I wanted to play with you. You just gave me the cold shoulder. Like, I didn't matter. That's a lie. That's a lie. I, listen... Chaz, I'll be dead ass with you. I am so inconsistent on Twitter. It's not funny. So you messaged right. me on Twitter. Messed up. And hang on. I messaged you today. Like, hey, what's your number? Yep. You messaged me probably like a month ago. Yes. I'm yeah. I'm really bad on Twitter. So I only tweet when I'm driving and someone pisses me off. I'm like, don't you hate when fucking someone does like that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, as I'm driving, something will happen. Like, for example, like, don't you hate when you pull up to a red light and there's two cars over there and you pull up behind the one car, the slower car? I tweeted that the other day because it happened. Uh, so I do a lot of tweeting about driving stuff. And then I tweet about fights sometimes when they're happening. I tweet about fights a lot because... Uh, yeah, a lot of interaction going. Da -da -da. I'm a fucking... I'm a nerd. I, I like to watch video. I'm a nerd like that uh luckily some of the guys in the gym asked me to watch their opponents and give them good breakdowns that's awesome i think that's an advantage for sure but uh i just like to i like to break people down uh more than anything so i do watch a lot of videos so i i talk about fighting a lot i watch the fights i talk about fighting a lot that's pretty much my twitter interaction is talking about fighting so obviously so really i knew menace was a fighter but then when we started doing the show, I'm like, you don't watch any fucking fights? Like, you don't watch, he watches, he used to watch nothing. Now he watches the there's week. A lot. There's, a there's a lot to lot keep up with. That. Yes. Well, no, there is. That do that. I'll that's keep up, up with. A second of fighting. And that's like, I was declare so like, my dad would be like, he would talk to me about fighting. I'm like, yo, dad, that's like you getting home from work and like watching somebody paint a fucking car. Like, wh when I get home from work, if you will, I want to fucking go somewhere else. So people are like, why don't you play UFC 3? Because I fucking actually do it. That's why I don't play PS, you know, yeah. UFC 3. I want to shoot fucking people in the head and race Ferraris and Lamborghinis because I don't do that in real life. You know why I don't play UFC 3? Because I would have to make my own character. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> Which is insane. Insane. <laughs> I've been in the UFC for like seven years. <laughs> Bro, they, uh, yeah, Randy, I don't know how they choose that, but they, we just found out last week they don't have Tatiana Suarez in the game either. Nope. They don't have. Um, they don't have quite a few prominent people. They should definitely have Tatiana in there though, because she's going to be a champion a for beast. sure. She is a beast. I love watching her. She's a beast. Sweetheart, she's too. one of my. Hey, the Raging Pandas became one of my favorite girl fighters as well, female yeah, fighters. But Tatiana uh, is uh, for sure man. one of the most talented female fighters in wow. the entire world. For mm -hmm. sure. Well, yes, Chaz, we had her on like last week, so if you want to go back and check out the Best Man episode with Tatiana as well as you can, yeah. I will actually. She's, uh, 
She's only going to get you. her hands. Her, her striking is only going to get better. She's she's going to be a problem for a long time. But she's got the she's got the Ben Askren. Uh, ben Askren said, I think a long time ago, he said, every time I go to every time I go to a striking practice, it's like putting money in the bank. So right now, my wrestling's at like a million dollars, but my striking's at like. Well, she's better. She's better at striking than Ben Askren. I think she could beat him in a boxing match. <laughs> by the way, but he said right now my striking's at whatever. Every single time I, every single time I go to a striking practice, I put more money in that bank. I think that's her. Yeah, in a different sense because she's. I can't wait to watch her against Rose and Whaley and Joanna and and whoever else in that top four or five that they put her against. Yeah, Coach, she's a legit. I was about to say something. You guys are, you guys. Who me? Her back is in a bad way. Her neck is in a bad way. Neck. Yeah. Oh, she injured, she really? Like, the Mina fight, right? No, she's had it since. That's why she said she quit wrestling, was because her neck was so bad. Then she. Well, yeah, I knew that, but didn't she like reaggravate it or something? Yeah, she reaggrav. She kind of, yeah. she kind of made it like it's always given her problems. Yeah. But she oh said, no, that's terrible. She yeah. Said, yeah, so she's her. She's on like a ticking clock, probably in my in my head. Hopefully not. Uh, that sucks. Hopefully well, I mean, not. Neck, neck, and back issues are are no joke. I mean, yeah. I've I've got lower back issues. Look at Mike Tyson. Shit, wait, wait, wait. That's and the then, hardest shit to deal with ever. When she's like, I got a neck injury, man, it starts going. Is it spinal? <laughs> like speaking like Mike Tyson. <laughs> is it spinal? It's spinal? And then she's like, what? He's like, it's spinal. <laughs> Like my guys, <laughs> probably, probably the wrong time, right? No, she laughed at it. She laughed. At, she actually yeah. thought Menace was funny. Yeah, it's wild. She thought that. <laughs> was it like a uh, pity laugh, or is it like a you're funny laugh? No, I, I no, was no. asking her because she had. I told her, I said, "Hey, you better stop laughing because I'm gonna keep going. He I'm gonna just keep going. <laughs> I'm gonna keep you know? going. He called yeah. her out on it, and it didn't flutter." The laugh stayed the same throughout the whole episode. Yeah. She enjoyed it. Yeah, because yeah, I was like, "Did you really? That's funny. You're laughing just to, you know, like a nervous laugh or like just to make me feel good about myself." She's like, "No, you're funny." I was like, "You know, that sounds a lot like Steph, my my girlfriend, ten years. It sounds a lot like Stephanie. When I say shit, she laughs, but I'm like, I, I'm like, that's why we're still together." Because she, always, she always laughs. I'm like, wait, she like tolerates it? Well, I, I know that she doesn't think it's funny, but she laughs and it makes me feel good. Yeah, Aww. you know, she's like, <laughs> I'm like, you think I'm funny, don't you? And she's like, yeah, I do. I'm like, God, I know that's not real. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it, but I'll yeah, take it. Like when you're having sex with a girl, it's like, oh my god, this is the biggest I've ever had. You're like, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I feel really good about it, but this is not the truth. You know, every time I've ever heard that, I'm not Francis. I Nugano. knew it was a lie. Because <laughs> yeah. oh. <laughs> I've heard one time. I was, you know, I was having at it. Like, man, they were the biggest. I'm like, how many guys have you been with? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Am I the first? <laughs> I, I feel bad for you now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yikes. And even yeah. there, you, that's what uh, something we we discussed in like the earlier episodes that me and Menace talk about in private. You'll never get the truth as far as what a girl's number is and shit like that. You know what I mean? I don't even want it. No. Like, why would you want that? Oh, I'm saying you don't want it, but you'll never get the truth. So if she tells you you're the biggest, he's saying, well, how many guys have you been with? Three? Yeah. Only two. Only two. Like, put in your head it's the biggest. Why not? Well, if I ask her how many guys she's been with, she's going to ask me how many guys I've been with. I don't want to tell her that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Weird. But hey, <laughs> I see a lot of girls. I see a lot of guys too. <laughs> yeah. Well, even Chaz, you've been with your girl for ten years. Randy, how long you been with your girl? Uh, almost a year and a half, I think. Yeah. And how old are you now, Randy? 
I'm 31. Yeah, so I always say to men, it's like once you're after 25, dating after like 25, definitely dating after 30. And I've seen this meme before. It's like picking through the dumpster or picking through <laughs> picking through damaged people. You know what I mean? <laughs> picking through the dumpster. Yeah. Mm. Dumpster diving for chicks. I yeah. like it. But, and well, I'm not, all I'm, right, Stan, Stan, oh, yeah, Stan keep going. Go deeper, Stan. And I'm not saying like... Sounds like me in college. I'm not saying like they're complete trash. They're just fucked. You know, the girls are fucked in the head and the guys are fucked in the head, broke, don't have a good dick game. your girl's younger than you, though? If your girl's... If, well, then that com- Different plays. You could have money. That's what Stan does. That's why Stan goes for those early 20 girls. Mm, I go for the early 20 girls because I like them. Not because they're... Well, no, because he says they're stupid. They're all... <laughs> <laughs> Be truthful. My girl's not stupid. I yeah, be truthful. Wait, <laughs> your, your girl's young right now, Randy? She's 25. Oh, all right. Uh, well, this is awkward. She's <laughs> 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 just shitting on everything about my, my relationship right now. No, I always wanted to be that guy. He said after 25 is, you know, when they're damn You know, they either have a kid, they've been divorced... They've, you know, we're in a really, that's just really a real relationship issue. where it got fucked up. Wait, don't backtrack now. I like yeah. where this is going. You, yeah. caught, Randy, you might have caught. I her, want truth. You might have caught her right yeah, in time. Stan. Right in time, yeah. Randy. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I guess, huh? Yeah. This sounds like some real. Uh, does East she live Coast. with you, Randy? Yeah, she does. Yeah. Oh, whoa! So, like, let's say you guys don't work out. The next guy, she's gonna be damaged. Why would she be damaged? Because she lives with you. She's planning on marrying you. She's what? like, man, this is it. This is, I'm going to have kids with this guy. This is, I'm done. And then when it doesn't work out, she's going to be like, yeah. Because uh, of how fucked up you are to her. Yeah, I was going to say, what if it's like an amicable <laughs> split? Like, what if, you no, know, there's like, there's Let's like, talk ways, about this, Randy. Yeah. There's like ways to like, Split up that's not vicious. You know that. Well, right? no, even it applies to men too. If at one point, she thought she was going to marry you. It doesn't work out. And it's like, all right, you know what? It's best we go our, our separate ways. You, at one point. If you thought about marrying you at one point, it's going to like. At one point, I thought I was going to do the NBA. It didn't work out. I'm not damaged. Wait, what happened, Randy? I said at one point, I thought I was going to be in the NBA. It doesn't work out. I'm not damaged. Women are different uh, than the NBA. Uh, Women are different uh, than a dream. Yeah. <laughs> I think marrying you after living with you for a year and a half is more like that's more of a real thing than you being an MBA NBA and you're <laughs> five. Well, five even here, so more. we won't go full misogynist, and we're related to men and women. If I uh, date you for five years and we break up, the next girl I date for a couple of years, I'm gonna be like, oh, and I'm gonna compare it to this one. That's kind of like the damage that you get from a previous relationship. So if a girl dates a guy for two years, thinks about marriage, kids, living together, shit like that, the next guy is going to get those thoughts and it's going to be compared to... And, and Randy, you're not dumb. The older you get, the more serious and the longer the... Like, the more serious you take the relationship. And wait, yeah. like, oh, I'm 25. I'm living with this guy. It's going to just be fun. Here's why we're picking through the dumpster, too, or at least saying that, because obviously re- relationship damage, emotional damage, whatever they had going on from their childhood, but it's going to be the... Oh, I forgot what I was going to say. My brain just completely lost it. Dan, you don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah, he's an asshole. No, but... <laughs> you... All right, listen, I, I look at it a little differently. Oh, I wait, say, uh... wait, wait. Sorry, Chaz, that's what it is. The older you get, the higher in age you get, the higher your body count gets. So for a woman, she's had X amount of guys that came in, ran in, fucked and left, dated oh, for years and left. <laughs> ran in. Same. Ran in, ran out. Dark hole right now. I don't know if we're going, we're going down a dark, dark place right now. Same thing with That's men. That's a big consideration the type of girls that stand dates. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Wide variety. Wide variety. <laughs> What do you have okay. to? Yeah, what do you have to say, man? It's what the, what kind of girls do I date? He's got twenty five year olds. He has doctors. He's got, you know, girls with with kids. He's all over the map. Inpatient, outpatient. You know, no big deal. Ran in, ran out. Yeah, I get it. White, black, Puerto Rican, Irish. I don't discriminate. You're not staying. 
It's not going to last, but, you know, can't discriminate. Oh, my God, Stan, you were going somewhere before you were like, Dennis, go on. No, that's what I was going to say. The older you get, the higher your body count gets. And obviously, we live in a world with that, like, double entendre, social stigma, whatever you want to call it. Men can hook up with as many women as they want, and it's okay. I don't know how a girl perceives it, but if a woman hooks, if a woman's body count is 20, 30, even 10 or higher, you're like, ugh. Ugh. I actually don't look at it like that. I actually look at it as, like, more of a good thing. I'm like, hey, if you, uh, if you're the more experienced, you know, I think uh, as you get older, the more people you've been with, the more you realize what you do and do not like. I think it's the same with women and men. I think you realize what you like and what you don't like, uh, not only sexually, but in the relationship. And you grow more as opposed to being damaged. I think it's more of like a growing process. Now, there are certain women, but also certain men that are what you would call damaged goods. I, you realize that pretty quick, though. You got to be like, hey, you're pretty fucking you got some issues going on. Or if you, if it's if that's who you are as a man, you got to be like, I've got some issues going on. I can't have any actual emotional attachments. But to me, a body count is a good thing. I'm like, hey, Listen, the more dicks that have ran through you, the more dicks you know you don't like. Come get some. <laughs> In my head, show me your experience when we're, you know, doing horizontal wrestling. But don't tell me anything about them or how many of them have happened. Well, yeah, I'm not going to ask because I, I don't want you to ask me. This is going, like We're going off the rails. Yeah. Hey, body counts. And- Randy, <laughs> men's the main show. I don't, I don't <laughs> want you to ask me. People want to know about. And even that, I don't mind a girl to ask me, but yes, I don't want to know her thing. But even if she told me, I don't care. I'm turned on by a whore. Like a, a whore type Stan, woman. Whoa, Stan, Stan, whoa. Stan. Stan. Yeah. Stan, you, all right. So a girl says, hey, Stan, how many guys have you been with? What do you say? Like, what would I say? Yeah. 10, 15. 10 guys? No, oh, what do you say, guys? I heard girls. <laughs> I wasn't paying hey, attention. Hey, clip that one. Clip that one. Want to be with you? <laughs> Are you, Prank? you tell girls you've been with 10, 15 girls? Guys. Are you, we talking guys or girls? You said guys. Oh, girls now. Girls now. You've been with 10, 15 guys. How many wait, girls do you tell? Wait, did you initially mean to say guys, or you accidentally said it, Menace? <laughs> gotcha. Is that all right? Just making sure. But no, no guys, zero guys, <laughs> zero guys. Yes, yes. I don't believe it. But. Yeah. Anyway, so you so you're yeah, dating a girl. Kidding. You tell her I've been with ten, fifteen girls. Yeah. Now ten and fifteen. That's like there's five pe- that you're like, I'm not sure. What do you mean? I'm but not... how far off is that? Ooh. Is that realistic? Is that a realistic number? Or is that something just you're, you're just saying? Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Just saying. Of and course. Then, and then she's just going to say her number is like five. Yeah. But I know you ever hear, you know, that old adage of you times things by three or you divide them by one or, you know. Divide them by the number. So if it's three, only, it's... Only in high school is that, like, maybe a real... Like, a girl like, yeah, then... Now, when you're 30 five. years old, you gotta start multiplying. Like, there's 365 days in a year, 52 weeks. Like, you Fuck, broke up man. with your ex that you were with for five years, you're gonna slay three dudes and see, like, ah... Yeah. I've, right? al- I've always thought that, right off the bat. I, like, if I ever broke up with a girlfriend... And then got back together with her. I know she fucked someone in between. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Even if it was two days, I'm like, oh, she definitely. She, as she should. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Even if it didn't happen, I check Randy, it off. Is this go against your like what you're trying to promote? Who me? <laughs> yeah, like you're, he's trying to promote a business here. We're like, yeah. I'm just listening. Hey, I'm just listening. That's all. I'm just, I'm just observing and listening. Oh, you're so. so- 
don't know. Should I be on this podcast? I don't know. What to do. <laughs> He's oh, like, I'm, I'm is this, I'm trying to get is this really uh, what I want my business to? <laughs> every like ten episodes, we go here, Randy. Yeah, <laughs> not every yeah. episode. I always tell Menace we should do it more because we do want to try to be like a men's Bible. And almost relate to them and have conversations yeah, like that. But how many have. times can we have the same conversation? We gotta like. We've never really had this yeah. conversation, have we? Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, but we go in in the realm. In the realm, but there's a lot of room in a ball. If you're going in the same ballpark, there's a lot of room in a ballpark. You can go a lot of different areas. I guess. Right now, we're going there with Chaz Skelly and Randy from uh, Pro. Randy. I'll go Randy from Prolific Media. Say it one more time. Fa- uh. Fain Rich. Fain Rich. Now I got it. I like, I like Randy with Prolific Media. I like that. Yes. Yeah. Prolific Media Randy. But yeah. I like that too. I like Randy's social media. No. But I'll start saying Randy Prolific Media. Has Please. any has anyone ever called you Kelvin Gastelum? Me? Yeah. No. Uh-uh. You know you look like him, right? No. I never have. No Do one. I? No one's ever said this. He's got a fatter face, longer hair. You think it's just our eyebrows and our nose? Same Has skin color. And skin complexion? Yeah. Same eyes, similar eyes. What do you mean? I guess. I don't know. I never I never got that before. I like Kelvin. We had a good yeah. time in uh, Chicago. We hung out one time. No, oh, he's awesome. No, he's – that yeah, guy's but hang on, That guy's Randy. hilarious. But if we're being real – I'm surprised no one's ever said that. Oh, my favorite, Menace, you know this. My favorite athlete to hang out with of all time is is uh, is uh, Chaz Skelly. Chaz yeah, Skelly. <laughs> all time. All time. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to dub over. I was yeah. trying to dub over when you. Were... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry to catch you at the right time. Uh, right. He. Was, it's we still don't oh, know. We had, we had a great time in Brisbane. We had a great time in Brisbane. We went out a lot. Yeah. And Chad, Every, hey, Chad, I didn't see one qual bear or kangaroo, and that was like on my to do. Like, man, I'm in fucking Australia. It's like a fucking right away. Nope, nothing. I would love to see a kangaroo. Mm. I've never seen a kangaroo in real life. Yeah, so who would win the fight? You or a kangaroo? I fucking smash a kangaroo. How? You ever see the? How? Yeah. Well, do you ever see the video of that dude that? Gave a kangaroo a little right cross when he was yeah, grabbing his dog. That's that's that kangaroo that's froze. One of my favorite videos. Freeze like that on me. See if I don't jump on your back and choke your ass out. <laughs> I'll fucking hit him. I'll hit him with a straight right. When he freezes, I just hit a little duck, super duck, come around his back, choke him out. He's got no issues there. with that. Done. Got him. Skinny ass little neck. Skinny ass neck. Randy, did you see the guy that beat up the kangaroo? I did see that video. Yeah, I did. You think that guy would kick your ass in a fight? No, I said the kangaroo. I think. Well, no, the guy. Yeah, maybe you're right. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think I'd have the wherewithal in that moment to be like, okay, I'm about to fight this kangaroo. I would just be like, there's a there's a kangaroo in front of me trying to kick me and punch me. No, the kangaroo. I the kangaroo. Can- no, no, no. The kangaroo yeah. had his dog. The kangaroo yeah. was fighting with his dog. Oh no, I didn't see that one then. No. No, that's the that's that one where the guy punches the kangaroo. The oh. the long video is the kangaroo's attacking his dog. Oh, I didn't see that. And I then didn't see that. Yeah, and then he runs in, the kangaroo stops, his dog runs away, and then he squares up with the kangaroo. And the kangaroo sits oh. there like Did you see the guy like what was that a couple months ago? He like choked out the bobcat or the mountain lion in California? I did not see that. I saw the headline. Yeah, I didn't I read didn't the story. I don't think there's a video. I'm just saying, did you see? Did you hear about that guy? That, I saw the headline, yeah. Full on, rear naked choke. Of That's mouth. insane. <laughs> That's crazy, dude. I'll tell you a true story real quick. When we first moved to uh, Florida, I didn't know there was a lot of alligators around here. I went up to uh, towards Orlando to ride mountain bikes. And we were staying at these people's farmhouse and there was a river running through their, like through their property. Well, my dog, Winston, he's a golden noodle, real sweet guy. Take him to the gym almost every day. And, uh, he goes out and he rolls in cow shit. 
And I'm like, God, what the fuck, man? So I throw him, I grab him, I throw him in the river real quick. Well, when I throw him in the river, he starts freaking out, like freaking out. So I, I look and there is literally like a fucking eight to 10 foot alligator just beelining for him. Yeah. I had like a moment in my head where I'm like, I'm either, if I can't get this dude out of the water right now, I'm jumping in and like trying to kick this thing in the head right now. Like, seriously, I love this dog so much. I reached out and actually pulled him out. And I was like, God, I'm so glad I didn't have to just try and drop kick this alligator because I'm sure if I had jumped down, he would have just been like, <laughs> like the easiest, easiest meal of all time. Like, well, like Uber delivered. Are more afraid of it. Like crocodiles, you're fucked. Alligators are actually a little more skittish. Think about it though. He's looking yeah. up. You're coming down yeah. on him. He's he just is like, dog. oh, I'm getting Uber delivered. Omar, a fucking hit your hammer. dog. It hit your dog. Your dog's instantly dead. Now you're in there like fuck with an alligator. Now <laughs> dog gets a little piece of you. You survive, yeah. but your dog's dead. And you have one arm. That would have been awful. Yeah. I'm glad. Anyway. Luckily, I got him out of there. I felt like such a dick, though. Dude, he was so mad at me, too. <laughs> like, they did not yeah. talk to you for, like, a few days? or? How oh, yeah. Happen? He was pissed. <laughs> My dog's got a personality. He's, like, a real... He thinks he's a fucking person. It's a real problem around here. Does yeah. he ever step to you? Like, hey, this is actually my house? No, he's a puss. You yeah. hear of that. Like, with dogs that aren't neutered, though, right? Yeah, he's neutered. Mine yeah. too. But, was neutered like last month. But Randy, the it's way good. We, it's good move. the way we yeah. said every now and then I come out with a good meme. We had Felicia Spencer on, and she's from yeah. Florida, Orlando. So Menace is like, do you guys have gators? Don't tell that to the Canadians. Yeah, yeah, she's from Ca- 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 Florida, whatever the fuck you want to call yeah. it. So Menace <laughs> is like, do you guys have alligators over there in yonder? And she's like, yeah, there's alligators. He's like, I think I can catch an alligator. Wouldn't that be cool if I caught an alligator? <laughs> that would be cool. I really oh, yeah. didn't still think I could catch an alligator. And then Menace... Maybe one. And then, no, no, no. And then after the episode, Menace is like, bro, I've seen endless videos of guys catching alligators. They hop, sneak up behind it, throw a cloak over its head, and they I'm fucking catch it. Yeah. yeah. So I sent him a video where a guy tries that and then, like, fucks up. man. Yeah. Well, I, that guy was, like, 80. Yeah. yeah. I'll send it to you, And then Chad. Stan put my head on the guy's body. Yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. Dennis, do me a favor, man. Don't try that, please. Maybe Actually, do me a favor. What? Hang on. That. Hang on, Randy. What if I'm filming it? Well, listen, still, you know. How many hits would that get? A lot. It would Bingo. Be, you wouldn't be able to see it when you're dead. So, like. Well, if a, I had Stan the Man there, all 280 pounds of him ready to pounce on that <laughs> alligator. <laughs> Stan, that's right, right? Bro, you think one alligator is going to take out Menace and the Man? No chance. No. Yes. No chance. Two would. Two would. No. Then, no, no, no. Because we'll be in South Florida, and we're going to have Chad Skelly there throwing soccer kicks and Anaconda in these yeah. Gators. Yeah. Not playing games. I was never a very good soccer player, but I'll try my hardest. I think a, um, rear, a rear naked choke could work on a lion. It can definitely work on a gator, alligator, crocodile. Have. Randy, so I'm trying to build up my YouTube page. So I go upstate <laughs> where I'm from, right? There's this cliff called Fawn's Leap. It's 40 foot, like waterfall into water. And I'm like, I've seen people do gainers over it, my friends. I never have. So I have a camera guy there. I said, hey. He's like, Dennis, you gotta do it. I'm like, yo, shut the fuck up. Like, I've never done this before. Give me a second to wrap my head around doing a gainer off a 40 foot cliff. And the go-ahead was like, yo, if I get fucked up, it's going to be on film. It's going to get them hits. If I hit it, it's going to be cool. So it was like a win-win how I looked at it. Okay. And I hit it. Come on, Randy. Come on. You know me. Yeah. Uh, I would just worry about doing it. 
you know, complete it. That's all. Um, well, you get your alligator then, so there you go. Okay. Put that in your own pocket. Yeah, that's your own and smoke it. Okay. But we're going to do Prolific Media Presents. Nope. <laughs> I'll have a cape on. He says no. Shirt, no. No shirt. No. Not a chance. No way. No way. Not a Yo, you can get it. Bro. Dan. You try to break your own Guinness record with like more lemon juice or something, we can talk. But we're not going to do uh, Prolific Media Presents Menace and the Alligator. And then we'll do it like an 80s sitcom where everyone's like this, and then they turn around, it says their name at the bottom of the screen, and it'll be Menace and the Man, Chaz Skelly, Alligator. And then we'll flash the alligator, it'll say Alligator. And when I jump on the alligator, like an audience will be like, ah. Okay. But you can only imagine how popular it would be if that alligator fucking took his legs straight off. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> you can only imagine. I don't want to imagine. Your okay. company would blow up instantly. Yeah, right. with the wrong media. With the wrong... <laughs> Who fucking cares? Me. Bah, bah, bah. We'd be partying. You, exactly. me, I got that living. She has like, you'd you be the man. We'd all be partying. Yeah. This is bottles in the fucking club being millionaires. The menace would be limp, limping in. One leg. <laughs> One leg. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Don't uh, make money. We're going to pass on that. We're not but, not on to something. I feel like we're definitely on to something. <laughs> yeah, <good> <laughs> For and, sure. <laughs> and then we just have I don't directed, not like it. directed by Kelvin Gastelum. <laughs> and then we'll just put his name in there, put a picture up of Randy. People will just glance right over it and be like, "Yeah, that's him." Yeah, because they only look at pictures for one second. <laughs> yeah, I've never got Kelvin Gastelum, man. You've that's really never one. gotten that? That amazed me. I said to Menace, "I'm like 100. percent He's got to have gotten that before." No, I've gotten uh, obviously like doppelgangers before, but not not no one in MMA. I, I don't see I don't see Kelvin Gla- Gastelum either. Yeah. You don't see. I see Kelvin Gastelum's doppelganger being that uh, 155 yeah. pound guy. It's because give. Yeah. If I'm gonna Photoshop a beard and a, a, a Spanish mustache mm-hmm. on Randy, and you'll see. Him, Randy, so you're gonna have to. Uh, you're gonna have to Photoshop. It, so. Yeah. Speaking of mustache, we could get some hits if you just uh, gave us a tutorial on how to shave that mustache. Mine? I'd like to have that. That's a five o'clock shadow, dude. You think I could get that? Yeah. Which mustache? Your mustache. Mine? Look at that. That's a yeah. five o'clock shadow. Whoa, this is like no two way it grows in like that. Yes. Like two and a half weeks of hard work. <laughs> really? That's how it grows. No, oh. you didn't shave. You didn't shave anything around. No, I did. Nothing grows here or here. I get a little whatever that is, a little bit of this. No, this is just how this is just how it looks. What? No what you, what fucking ethnicity way. are you? Like Asian? What? What ethnicity are you? Um, I'm Syrian and Italian. And so I'm your not- facial hair. What you're telling me is your facial hair just grows in all white, trashy like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know what you're saying, but yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> wow. Exactly what I'm saying. I put you out on stand, but not you, Randy. It gets like nothing. Like I'll get. A I thought you minutes. did that shit on purpose. No, nope, no. Nope. Yeah. This is uh, this is hard work and dedication, right wow. here. Man, I thought about doing a quarantine mustache and just shaving the beard and whatnot, but hey, I didn't. Man, you never thought about it. No, after I had Kiesa on, I totally thought about it because Kiesa right. was like, "Yeah, I got this mustache for." Listen, I'm gonna be yeah. honest with you, man. If you shaved everything else and just grew your mustache, your clientele would go from 25 to about 17. Oh, it'd go down. My clientele, oh, we'd lose. We'd lose. <laughs> you the girls. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're saying like me? Pedophile. You're saying me? Yeah. 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 Oh, 100%. Girl, you'd go from 25 to 17. You'd look like a oh, pedophile. Stands in the bars are like, hey, you got long hair. I was like, yeah, I'm donating it to. 
<laughs> I, I, I've never lo- used that line once. Wigs for but kids. I've been there. Bro, I've never. Used- <laughs> Don't make up lies, Menace. I've never used that line. Oh, my Lanta, Jordan. Um, <laughs> oh, my Lanta. I like it. Well, but. Right. Stand now let's stand line. Let's shut it down. Yeah, that is what I'm growing yeah. it for, but don't listen to Menace. I don't use that as my pickup line. It's a great line. It you is a you're great like line. Eric Person. Yeah, but you're playing on cancer there. That's not that's not ethical. Like those uh social media people that like just hold the drills by the whoop. Whoa, 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 Stan. If you're gonna like save some people like that are having cancer and give them hair, you should be able to get pussy from it, no? No, he's saying that you're using it like you're just saying you're doing it, but you're not actually doing it. No, he's gonna do it. No, he's definitely gonna do it. No, he's he's growing his hair out to do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. you, I thought you said I thought you said no, you've never. I'm saying no. I'm saying that, that he says that the girls. No, I don't. I am really doing it. I don't say oh. that to girls though. Oh, but you I should do that though. He was confused. Yeah. You deserve he's it. Just, no, yes. I understand. I still I, I don't think you play off cancer to get some ass. But I do, do. I do deserve it, Randy. I okay, do deserve yeah, some yeah. nice pussy. No, from this you era. don't. I definitely do. Now that you yeah. mention it. Fuck oh. off. <laughs> but Randy from. Po- I mean, I, yeah, it's kind of weird when he says that you're. Uh, I can see both sides, but I definitely think you deserve it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm waiting on the side of you deserve hey, it. Hey, grown us out to fucking help people that have cancer. I think you should be like, man, that's an awesome thing. I'm into you, and then you score. Yes. I don't see why not. I like yeah. I, I like where this group's heads at. That's a bad thing. No. So we'll get into that, man. You're actually a good human being. As soon as then we- his uh then his guy count would go from fifteen to sixteen. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, or ten to eleven. It's sixteen. It's going to sixteen. This fucking guy. That was awesome. Hey, Stan, if you don't clip that, you're a dickhead. I'm absolutely actually, clip Randy. That. Randy, go in. You clip it because Stan's in definitely not clipping it. Bro, what Stan are you talking to- about? I clip me getting abused all the time on this show. I'm absolutely clipping you're not gonna that. Clip that one though. You want to bet? Yeah, I do. I have no problem with homosexuals. Do whatever you want. Am I one? Absolutely not, but... Absolutely not, Stan. What do you got against homosexuals? TBD. Dude? To be determined. Yeah. Yeah. I still didn't have... sound hey, that way when you hey, told us how bad guy guy been with. Homosexual. No, no, no. I still have a lot of life to live. We don't know where this thing's going, but right. as of now, that number's inaccurate. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> 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 well, Ch- Chaz Skelly, now that we've had you on, finally, Menace always sings your praises. We'll make this a regular thing. All right. Randy from Prolific but, Media. I mean, do you want to do that? It seems like <laughs> your viewer count might go down after that. Uh, no. Listen. Definitely go up. Does All right. Thank Randy, you, guys. Randy, will go up or down? Up. Uh, up. Nice. Oh, the professional says up. <laughs> Bro, even Randy. <laughs> I like he said it. He said it like he ran out of a, a magic eight ball. Like, <laughs> up. <laughs> those things are really smart. Yeah, yeah. I don't like it my kids those. Yeah. <laughs> like, boy, did you gonna get dinner? <laughs> Doesn't look good. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. I did, what if I did all my parenting off of a magic eight ball? <laughs> you would be the best parent ever. Yeah, that, that would be pretty parents? good. That would be pretty good. Oh man. You could literally never go wrong. Yeah. And you're not the bad guy. Like Dad, we want to really cream. not at Hang all. on. Yeah. Hang on. Let's see. Yeah, you are. Let's go. And even anything that happens when the kid gets upset, you just put the eight ball down, and then when they start bitching, you go and you just point to the eight ball like, like I know you can't read, but that says no. Yeah, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't do it. We went through this fair system, the magic hey. eight ball. You want to call your mom? 
I know you can't read. He says yes. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why is a n? <laughs> Sorry. Yes, that es is a o. No. Sorry, bro. It's all okay. Yeah. Yeah, right. I'll kick her ass, dude. Now nah, she's a good person. Anyway. Yes, but Randy. <laughs> Randy. Me and my kid's mom. We're like we're freaking solid. We'll we'll clip. <laughs> well, wait. Even that. Uh, that's something where me and Menace go. I'll say baby mama. Like, oh, you know your baby mama, and Menace goes. Don't call her that. Yeah. You mean, you mean my kid's mom? And I'll go, kid's yeah. Mother. Yeah, her. All right. And he says, don't call her my baby mama. No. That's what she is. I give her more respect than that, dude. Why is that disrespect? I like it. I just, I don't know. I don't know. My kid's mother or baby mama? I'm gonna well, say I, I think the, the term proper. baby mama usually comes with a following of drama. So if somebody's not a dramatic person, I think you would rather just call them the your child's mother, yeah. not necessarily your baby's mama. If yeah. they're a good person, a good mother, you don't want to call them like baby mama because right. they're not dramatic. Yes, I like how you got a uh, scientist. And I'm there. not like you know, I'm not like uh, you know, I don't. If I say ghetto, is that like is that racist these days? Yeah, apparently. We don't care, though. We've already said menace. We don't give a shit about that. I don't think uh, saying the term ghetto is racist. I don't. Who knows? Yo, Ooh, I say ghetto. Well, a, guy, a guy that I work with, he's in the boating. He's docked his boat. He was docked next to a bunch of teachers who were saying, the teachers were saying, if you have a Trump flag or American flag, that means you're racist. That's definitely not true. He was like, what? If I have an American flag, I'm a racist? Well, your political affiliation or your love for your country does not make Listen, you in any we're gonna save this for next way, week. shape, or form racist. We're going to save this for next week. Because it's 10 yeah. o'clock. It's quarter after 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got to get up at 5.30 a.m. Eastern time. And I gotta the be up at eight, on right now and I feel the same is way a one-hour topic. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. I'm good. Yeah. What? It's only seven here, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I know you're good. I'm working man now, Randy. I still have daylight. Yeah, yeah. I see that in your fucking humongous mansion. <laughs> your mansion windows with your fucking huge dormer fucking how high is your ceiling 25 feet yeah you can play, that basketball. Fucking you can play ceiling. basketball in your living room yeah look at this randy Lane, you want to see all women <laughs> i'm palming the ceiling <laughs> and i've got a fucking stolen picture behind me hey Social media pays. I keep trying to tell you guys that. Well, listen. Stan's going to figure out some kind of sponsorship, and we're getting you. I'm trying to get paid over here. I respect it. I'm over here drinking free beer. That's all I can afford. <laughs> I'm over here drinking uh, Pat's for Living because that's all I can afford. Yeah. I'm just having LaCroix because I like it. It's I, healthy for uh, you. I thought that I saw that before that he was drinking Lacroix. I was like, maybe it's a beer, but it's probably a seltzer. But yeah, anyway, I just hate carbonated water. Before we, before we head out of here, we'll cheers our great South Bay's, our Chaz's drink, as well as our. Oh, look at Menace! Not even here. Fuck you! Oh. I'm talking to Uriah Faber, you asshole. You trying to tell him to get a. What's his name on? Billy? No. I'm trying Billy. to drive a pair himself. Munoz. Well, no, he hit me up 33 minutes ago, but I was so engaged in all you guys. He's like, you still good? And I'm like, How hey. How about this? Why don't you have uh, Alex? Alex and I will come on next week. I'll get Alex on here for sure. All right, cool. Me, you, Alex. And Dude, Alex name? is fucking hilarious. You'll love him. Oh, is he? No, he's funny. Fine. Right. Wait. 
Lock it in, because I'm going to be cocky. I'm going to be like, Uriah, we're having your boy Alex on. You should join him. Yeah. So, so you're, you're bumping me out for fucking what do you Uriah's mean? favor? What, what are you talking? You're going to be on too, you ninny boggin. <laughs> guy's fucking bumping me for Uriah? <laughs> I'm not bumping you. It's going to be like a fucking party. <laughs> Alright, sounds good. Yeah. All right. We'll have a hey. little party. You bring some hey, tomatoes. Jazz, listen, Jazz, I ain't got much time, but if you want to get the sticks, I'll <laughs> do it. Hey, let's do it. Let's do it. I'm all kinds of set up. I'm ready to go. What's your, are you PlayStation? Hey. Are you on PlayStation? Hey. That's basic. Uh, that, that's Long Island basic bitch for yeah. I'll send you my. Uh, I'll send you my uh, gamer tag through. What's it called for? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Well, you got Xbox. Yeah, Xbox. Uh, very well. It's cross platform. It doesn't matter. Xbox as well. I just play on my PS4. Randy, Actually, you, play you, video games? you, me, Alex, and uh, my buddy Sasan all play together. I play with Alex all the time. He's. I mean, he's let's go. Let's do it. Let's go! Yeah, just shoot me your gamer tag, your uh, whatever activation tag. All right, got it, Buzz. Later, boys. Bye. Good talking to you, Chaz. Yeah, yeah, good talking to you guys too. Randy, yeah. Randy, you like what you see on here? We're doing something here. It's like, oh my god, we finally got rid of Chaz. No, no. Like oh it. my god, I'm just joking. Chaz is the man. Oh, uh, you guys got. Bro, the scrapper and the man. Another new podcast coming out, Randy. Whenever you, whenever prolific wants to get behind it, we're dropping the menace. We're picking up Chaz. Okay. So, Randy, you see what we're doing here, right? Yeah. It's not all fighting. We take, we talk life with fighters, and yeah. we talk to people that don't fight about fighting. Yeah. And we're still hitting the fighting spectrum. Even. I like it. I get it. I totally get it. Um. And uh, it's funny. Like, Thank you, Chaz, going back and forth was fucking funny. So, yeah, well, you know what? I'm, I'm doing that with everybody. Yeah, well, but it's not really you. You're not that funny. Chaz is great, though. Chaz is, Chaz is awesome. amazing. Yeah. There's Dennis, and then there's Chaz, and it's like, oh, shit. Hey, watch both you guys just fucking <laughs> make out. I'm not into dudes, Menace. We've been uh, through this. But, yeah, hey, oh. uh, this was fun. I had a good time. Well, listen, man. I know it's late, though. Anytime you want to come on. You're welcome. So here. Wait, wait. Randy, it is late, but Menace, we're going to go a quick round off. There's a card this weekend. I pee oh. pretty bad, but let's go. Go pee real quick. This is actually no. a great card. Let's this, just get through. It's a really good card. Stack yeah. for uh, fight night. Yeah. Hit me with it. I don't know if this fight's still on, but Austin Hubbard versus Max Kershbrough. I heard Austin Hubbard. Was just I uh, yeah. So go take your piss real quick if you got a piss. How bad you got a piss? Yeah. Austin Hubbard just had like compartment syndrome, which is basically when you break a bone or have a surgery and air builds up and your shit. So I heard, what? I don't know, some crazy shit. I heard Joe Rogan talking about it, and then I looked at the pictures. He has like a scar from his knee right. all the way up to his hip. Because air like fills a pocket, and you got to like get the air out. Or some crazy shit. And he's probably at yeah, that fight's probably scrapped. No, how long ago did that, did that happen? I don't know. It might be Let's scrapped. Skip it then, right? Just skip that one. We'll skip that one. I just wanted to say because I saw the name: Roxanne Modafferi, Lauren Murphy. Roxanne, the one that was on the Ultimate Fighter with the glasses. Yeah. Both. And she's like into like comics and shit, right? Yeah. And then who's the other girl? Lauren Murphy. She's like, looks like she got smashed in the face with like a stick. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. They're super. Which one? Which one's more attractive to you, Stan? Um, <laughs> neither. Honestly, if you have to pick one. I'd probably get drunk and. And hook up with Roxanne first. Really? Yeah. I think I'd go the other way. Really? <laughs> so here's the thing. Lauren Murphy might have been... Now, don't 
might have been with a few more guys. Roxanne's like, yo, this, I might not get this dick again. I got to do some work right now. That's all. Going, all right, Stan, we can't be going here with this. That's Anyways. just what I'm looking at. That's what I'm saying. We, we just went there. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, yeah, fight you're, picks we're, you're we're, we're, yeah, we're fight picks, dude. I pick off looks. I'm a misogynist, Randy. Yes, he, <laughs> he does. I'm going. Uh, I, well, hang on. In, in real talk, though, uh, Murphy's super tough, but so is Roxanne. Number six versus uh, number seven. I think Roxanne has better takedowns yes. and her ground and pounds, but I think Lauren's the tougher, like, get punch, throw punch, and throw a combination. Well, I think Roxanne can take punches and get a takedown, which I think wins the the fight. Yeah, I think Roxanne pulls off wins that she's not supposed to, and she's going to pull off this win. Not that she's not supposed to, but she's a scrapper. Yeah, Randy, who you got? I think she's I think she's well more well rounded. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with. Uh, I think I'm going to actually go with um, Lauren Murphy. Lauren, yeah. Well, here's the thing, Roxanne. For the betting odds, Ro- Roxanne pulls off wins she's not supposed to. I mean, she 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 got in she got in on, on Macy and and um, in her last fight, and she beat Antonina. Um, but I think Lauren's super scrappy. She got that win over Andrea Lee this last fight too. Um, I'm gonna go Lauren. I I think the 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 on paper it's Roxanne, but I think I'm gonna go Lauren Murphy. So we th- we throw out. Three on every fight, we throw out three options. Who do you want to win? Like, who are you rooting for? Who do you think's going to win? And then we throw on like the betting odds if you want to, you know what I mean? Like, sure. if you're a betting man, who would you vote for? Who do you like more? Who do you want to win? And then who do you think, like, technically is probably going to win? I don't. I don't want. I don't have a dog in that fight. As far as like, you know, I. I don't really have a relationship with either of them. Right. When I was at yeah. UFC, um, yeah. I think. I think uh, Roxanne has very, very good uh, jujitsu and, and ground yeah. and pound. Said, but I think Lauren has her kind of everywhere else. So yeah. I'm gonna go with Lauren. Okay. okay, I'm going Roxanne. I'm going Roxanne off of how I usually pick fights, but I do think Lauren's gonna win. How's that sound? I'm more. I I would rather bang. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. And that's a very tough pick because they're not. Either one's not easy on the eye. You gotta edit all those things. I feel. No, I don't. Or not. We just okay. won't even post that one. Matt Frivola versus Frank Camacho. <laughs> I gotta go. Hang on. I gotta go with my with my man Frivola. I think he's super tough. He's my homie. I'm rooting for him. I think he's got a good uh, team. Good work ethic. What are the odds on that? Or is that like another page for you to pull up? No, I got it right here. They got even, pretty even. 125 to 105, negative. Uh, Favola's negative 125. Camacho's negative 105. Well, Matt's the favorite, yeah. Yeah, slight um, favorite. Camacho got, what's, what's, that, what's that stuff that Wolverine's made out of? Animantium? Yeah. yeah. That's what Camacho's chin is made out of. That dude... Can get hit with lunchbox after lunchbox, cinder block after cinder block. Uh, that's a good fight. I think I like your boy Matt too, though. In that fight, I think he's just a little bit better everywhere. But Frank is that dude is just tough. Man. And I've trained, I've trained with Matt, and I would say he's definitely more of a gainer. Like he's very tough opponent while training with. I think he even steps it up a notch. Come, he's more of a, a gamer, I think. Yeah, up to his competition. Yeah, yeah for sure. Fred Fest 2020. Hopefully it happens. Yeah, yeah I'm going oh. for a Favola. Hopefully, <sighs> bro, the coronavirus might have put an axe in Fred Fest. I disagree. I don't think it did. You think, I think that, that's going to be the only thing happening? So, yeah, real quick. Is it in uh, July? It's usually in June, I believe. Or I'd have to. wrap his fight, no? Yeah. But they have a Randy, the Frivolas, his family have a legendary party on the North Shore of Long Island every year. Okay. I've only been to Long Island once. Um, I didn't get to see anything, but it was cool. But I told you about that sushi spot. Yeah, we did go there, huh? That place in Long Beach? Is that where it was? Long no, Beach? I sent you to uh, 
Uh, Stan, I'm taking you there too, where it's all you can eat sushi. Where in West Babylon? Yeah, but there's another one in Saki Asia. There's another one in Mastiqua. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, it was cool. Long Island was dope. Good food. Anyways, Jill- Jillian Robertson versus Courtney Casey. Oh, your girl. Well, I got. Hang on. So we, Randy, we also have a thing like if you've been on the show and the other person hasn't been on the show, exactly. we're going. We're rooting for you. It's yeah, sure. Uh, so who? Wait, who are you guys taking? Who's on Jillian. the show? Jillian. Jillian. Um, I like Courtney at one twenty-five. I think she's like massive for one fifteen. I like Courtney too, but I'm a bigger. Oh. I'm going Jillian. I think I'm going to go Jillian's. Uh, she's the jujitsu girl, right? She's like very slick on the ground. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think I'm going to go. Red hair. Red, yeah. Pink, pink, red hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I'm going to go. Uh, I think I'm going to go Courtney. Mark, Mark Andre Baralut versus Oscar Piechoto. Yeah. Go on Oscar. I'm going to go the Canadian guy, Andre Barriol. Um He's got some heavy ass hands. I'm going to go Barrio as well. Tisha Torres versus Brianna Van Buren. Ooh, I didn't know that fight was on this card. I'm going to go T- Tisha. Brianna's tough. She She's the girl from uh, San Jose, right? Like DC and them's camp? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, she's good. Uh, Both of these girls are tiny. So yeah. where where like where Tisha. Tisha's usually fighting girls bigger than her, this is a girl her size. Yeah, I think I like she's Tisha. gonna excel there. I like Tisha, but that 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 uh that girl Brianna's good. Yeah, she's fun to watch. Let me see. Let me see. Odds are Tisha's the underdog, plus one eighty. Really? Wow, a big underdog. Yeah, Brianna's minus two twenty. Wow. And then huh? G- Jillian versus Courtney Casey is one twenty five negative for Jillian. 105 negative for Courtney. So very close. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm going with, what's her name? I'm going to go Tisha Torres on that. I think she's going to out karate her. Clay Guida, Bobby Green. Damn. OG fight. So this I'm one. Going Bobby, I'm going Bobby Green. Yeah. When was the last time Clay Guida was taking anyone down? Well, I was going to say for you, Menace, this is tough because this is like you probably want Clay to keep winning because it makes you look better. But at the same time, Bobby Green's your boy. Yeah, but Bob, yeah, Bobby Green's been on the show, so that's another reason. But I just think A third reason. Clay stands with people. Yeah. He actually he does chase takedowns too. He's coming, he's, he's coming off a loss to Jim Miller. Quit Miller Clay yeah. Guida. I think I'm going to go Clay. I think he's going to just grind him. Oh, Bobby Green all day in this one. Yeah. Well, Bobby Green is – Clay definitely has a better gas tank. Yeah. Yeah. And even Bobby Green's in this boat. Bobby Green lost to Barbosa, lost to Poirier, lost to Magomedov, drove at Vandata, beat Eric Koch, lost to Dracar Close, lost to Trinaldo. So they're keeping him around. He's lost five of his last seven. Really? Yeah. yeah. He lost five in a row? No. five. Of, he's won five and one in his last seven. What five. I'm saying is like when you lose them consecutively, you can lose four, win one, then you're it's like you reset. Yeah. You can lose another three in a row. He hasn't lost five in a row. But he's, no. He's won five one. He lost three in a row, then had a draw. Then he beat Eric Koch. Now he's had two losses in a row. He's also an exciting fighter, too. Very. Very. So. Yeah. A lot of decision losses, too. The only person to knock him out was Poirier. I'm going Bobby yeah, Green. Yeah, I'm going to go Bobby Green. He's got a chip on his shoulder. Uh, they got Clay Guida as the... Oh, no. Clay Guida is the underdog there. Okay. Plus 195. Bobby Green's negative 250. Wow. And now the main card, Jim Miller versus Roosevelt Roberts. I'll go Jim Miller. It's a tough fight for Roberts. Roberts is a huge favorite. Yeah, he's good. He's really good if you haven't seen him fight. Yeah, um, he's plus he, he's negative two forty. Jim Miller's plus one eighty five. Yeah. I'm gonna go. I'll 
Ooh, Jim Miller, though. If he gets him down, I think it's a wrap. I just think if he gets him down. I'm going to go Roberts. I'm going to go the favorite. I think I'm going to go Jim Miller on that. Yeah. Oh, gee. I am mad at it. Just because the East Coast vibe. So, now this one's a tough one for us. Bilal Muhammad versus Lyman Good. All right. Well, you said before, Lyman Good has confirmed coronavirus. We saw the 23-year-old girl's lungs, like, on the internet just the other day. Like, she had to get a lung transplant. So, let's say Muhammad and, and Lyman Good were equal. Lyman gets a coronavirus. His lungs are fucked. He's now here. So I got to go Bilal. Science. What I think science. I, in this fight right here will decide how bad the coronavirus is in my head. <laughs> Seriously. For a fight, yeah. Go I think I'm going to go with Lyman, the sideboard. Lyman good. I love Bilal, though, man. He's so fun to watch fight. Like if Lyman good wins a third round decision – Coronavirus is bullshit. Does not, yeah. <laughs> but if he gasses really hard in the second, I'm like, oh shit. They got Bilal as a negative 135 favorite. Lyman is plus 105. Mm-hmm. I think I'm going to go <sighs> Bilal Muhammad. Yeah. I initially went Lyman good, but I'm going to have to, I got to. I think the coronavirus might have fucked well, him up. Well, the man, I think you should, you should stick Lyman good. I want Bilal just so I can see his funny tweets afterwards. Wait, but who, who's been on Menace and the Man more? Bilal. Right. Lyman's only been on once, but we almost had him twice. But Ra- Raquel Pennington versus Marion Renault. That's a fun fight. Yeah. Um... Pennington hasn't fought in a minute. Yeah. Oh, with Pennington, I think she's tough. I'm going oh, Pennington. I thought she wasn't going to fight the same cards or, as her lady. They're not on the same card. Oh, they are. They are. Yeah. They ever been on the same card together? I thought they were one time. They were, and I think they said they weren't going to do it again. Because one of them lost, right? Yeah. But or did both of them lose? Maybe they're training together in the garage. Raquel is the favorite, negative 160, plus 130 for Mariam Renault. Oh, but yeah, I'm, go- I'm going Pennington in that one. I'm going yeah. Renault. I think she's going to submit her. So now, so now this one is like the main event for us, Josh Emmett versus Shane Burgos. Yes, that fight is so awesome. When I saw that fight – sorry, my dog's going – my puppy's going nuts. When I saw that fight, I was like – yeah, yeah, this this is the one right here. Um This could this fight could indefinitely put Shane Burgos like on on. Him being Cub Swanson definitely put him on. But I think this fight can really like yo, you're really it. Burgos is a contender if he wins this fight. Yes. He moves into that it's fight so to get awesome. in the top three. K- Qatar, yeah, Cater, yeah. yeah. And that fight was awesome. I'd watch that fight again. Um, ooh, who you got, Dennis? I Shane? mean, we just had Shane on last week. He's a New York guy too, right? I mean, yeah. Jersey. I have same set. Same. I mean, I mean, I, I is Emmett's got to be the favorite? No, no, Shane is. Really? Yeah. Well, the question is: Is will Emmett make weight? <laughs> Shane is a negative 140. Josh is a plus 110. I think I'm going to go – I think I'm going to go Shane. I think he's a little bit more well-rounded on the feet. Josh got power, though, man. Josh yeah, – he hits. He hits hard for – what are they, 145, right? Yeah. Yeah. I got Burgos all day. Movement. I think Burgos picks him apart. Wow. Even yeah. He's close. Nah. I think it's uh, th- just maybe three rounds, but three rounds of him just dancing on the outside, Emmett like swinging at air. No, I think it's gonna be a little rock and sock him. Huh? I yeah. think I think Shane, Shane likes a little bit of a firefight. I feel like yeah, yeah. yeah. But I feel I'm saying it I, could I, be a mistake here. Yeah, yeah. I I could be wrong, but I think Burgos. When I watch both of them, I feel like Burgos is quicker. 
Emmett has power, but I think Emmett just catches people. Like, I think he caught Stevens, and then Stevens knocked him out. He was unsuspecting. He caught Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson was kind of fucking him up for the beginning of the fight. You know? not. I guess I don't want to say people underestimate him, but... No, I got you. They zig when they should zag, and he catches them. It could happen to Burgos, but I think Burgos is good. So, main event, Alexander Volkanovsky. No, nah, Volkov. Oh, Alexander Volkov, I apologize, versus Curtis Blades. That's a great fight, too. Blades would be champion right now if he didn't. Hello, Blades. Yeah, if he didn't get... If Ngannou, your boy Ngannou, wasn't his kryptonite, he'd probably yeah. be champion. Like, if he fought Stipe, there's a realm where he just wrestle fucks Stipe for five rounds. I feel bad for Blades in this spot, because if he wins, what does he do? He he He's not fighting for the title next, you know? So... What you know? What 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 does he do? I mean, the other hand, Volkov and uh, you know Volkov wins. Who does he fight? You know, if he beats he if he beats Volkov, and he's negative one negative four hundred, Volkov's plus three hundred. If he beats is a scenario. If he beats Volkov, Wait, that big of a favorite? Yeah, he's minus four hundred. Yeah. If, wow. D, who's if minus what? Who's the who's the negative? Blades. Uh, Blades. Is minus he's the underdog. No, the favorite. Oh. So if Volkov is a bad motherfucker, yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's plus three hundred. Like that's can't wrestle. He can't wrestle though. Yeah, but he's seven feet tall. If you take him down, he's just, he can wrap his legs up. And I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I, it's not that easy. But I think Blades is. He's got to throw that knee up while he's shooting. And it's good night, yeah. bro. Yeah, but you saw that fight. Uh, I think it was Blades' last fight versus JDS. Yeah, his, his striking is there now. Yeah, his striking. He's really good, man. He's really, really good. Yeah. Like, um, I'm going blades. Yeah, me too. I mean, with the odds being that crazy, I might throw a couple bucks the other way. Fuck it. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. I think I think I'm gonna go blades too, but I I can probably tell you right now I'm gonna be betting both. That's that's that that's a, that's that's pretty crazy to me. Plus three hundred. Throw I mean, fifty bucks out, see what happens. Mm-hmm. All right, more than that for me. More than that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I don't know. And Volkov hasn't fought in, what, over a year, I feel like. No, he fought Greg Hardy. Yeah, wasn't that – when was that? Uh, I think right before the corona, no. Oh, was that like February? Let me see. It wasn't too long ago. Uh, maybe you're right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Um. But yeah, I'm going. He fought Greg Hardy on uh, November of 2019. Okay, yeah, 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 sure. But enough time. Yeah, I'll go. Uh, I'll go. Yeah, we're going Blades, but you always like the odds. You like a big favorite, a big underdog. I mean, you're a betting man. You go Vol- Volkanovski, but you think yeah. Blades gonna win? I'll go Blade. Yeah, Blades for the win. But if I'm, I'm gonna bet, I'm probably gonna bet on Volkov. And Volkov, Menace. I say it too, obviously. Volkanovski, but it's Volkov. What's his name? Volkanovski doesn't lose. But we didn't get into any of that. But Randy, we'll make this a regular thing. Anytime you want to jump on, we'll preview UFC 251. We'll talk prolific media. We'll talk with Fred Singano and you at the same time. Whatever we can work out. Let's do it. Yeah. I appreciate you guys having me on. This was fun. Thanks, Randy. You're the man, Randy. Randy from Prolific Media. Everybody go check him out. If you're a business, be sure to Slide in the DMs. Yeah. Appreciate and, it, man. Thank you. All right. We'll talk Peace to you soon, me. brother. Oh, nice episode, Menace. Yep. So, man, Uri- Uriah Faber was coming on, but you don't look at your phone. I'm in the show. Yeah. You know what do? I like that. I like that. So, schedule him for another time. The next week, we'll hit you up. And what do you say? Fuck you? I said, sounds good. All right, sounds like a plan. Go ahead, Menace. Well, see you later.